So today, we have probably the most interesting guy we're going to have the whole year, and his name is Kurt Bunk, or Curtis Bunk. I'm supposed to call him Admiral Curtis Bunk. And his title of his presentation today, which is going to be very interactive, I suppose, is called Stretching the Edges of Technology Enhanced Teaching from Tinkering to Tottering to Totally Extreme Learning. Okay. Uh, Kurt Bonk is a professor of instructional systems technology at Indiana University and a president of Course Share. Drawing on his background as a corporate controller, CPA, I, I need to know what a CPA is, okay? Educational psychologist and instructional technologist, Bonk offers unique insights into the intersection of business, education, psychology, and technology. He received the Cyber Star Award from the Indiana Information Technology Association. He's also the, he got the most outstanding achievement award from the US Distance Learning Association. And also he got the, the most innovative teaching in a distance education program award from the state of Indiana. Okay? And he's a well-known authority on emerging technologies for learning. Bonk reflects on his speaking experience around the world in his popular blog, Traveling Edman, I'll, I'll share with the link soon. He has co-authored several widely used technology books, including The World is Open, How Web Technology is Revolutionizing Education, which is from 2009. And he also has a book called Empowering Online Learning, which basically has 100 plus activities for reading, reflecting, displaying, and doing from 2008. He has the Handbook of Blended Learning from 2006. And he has another book called Electron Electronic Collaborators, 1998. And he has so much more. And one thing you're going to have is going to have, I know for sure, whether you learn something, that depends. But the fact you're going to have fun, and you're going to be engaged, and you're going to learn a lot, I think that's going to happen today, and, and I'm looking forward. And I don't want to speak anymore because you didn't come to hear me. You came to hear Admiral Curtis Bunk, and let's move over. And I'm going to disappear until he needs my help. Okay, thank you very much. Hey, Captain Zed. <laughs> Hi, Nor. Uh, it's good to see you here too. Uh, good to see my friends in Illinois. Yes, he young. Good to see my friends in Korea. Good to see my friends in Malaysia. Good to see my friends here in um, Indiana. Where else do we have people? Why don't you type in the chat window where you're coming from, and if you'll notice at the top, uh, you can change your name or put in your name instead of being Gus. I can actually see who's here. So as you type in, we got Matt from Australia, Nora from Malaysia, Boston. We got June. Hi, June. Jung Ah is coming in from Boston U, I think, right? We've got someone from Orlando. I'm going to guess that's Bay Wynn from Central Florida. Ah, we got someone from Penang. Fuzzy. Hey, Fuzzy. All right. Oh, some good friends coming in from all over the world. Good to have you with us here today. It's been almost two years since Global Learn, Fuzzy. Thanks for helping us run the conference there. I wish we could have done it again last year, right in the same place. Too bad. Um, anyhow, good to have people here from KL. It's a great place, KL. They have me running races every time in KL. Anyhow, that's enough chit-chat, but it seems that we have people from various places around the world. We do have some questions. Hey, um, Zed, you know, um, well, actually, let me give you the title here, Stretching the Edges of Technology Enhanced Teaching from Tinkering to Tottering to Totally Extreme Learning. And I think what I could do here real quick, if I'm really um, efficient here on the, on the keys, and maybe I'm not, is I can give you the link to download the original slides as well as to, to get the color PDF of this talk. If you haven't seen it, here it is. So you can get the original slides. And only the first uh, 50 of you can do that. But everyone can get the color PDF of the slides. So you can follow along as I speak. So that's the first link there. So if you want to click on the first link, that would probably be the best way to um, to get started here tonight. Uh, and uh, again, it's, it's great to be here at 10 o'clock Eastern Time here in Indiana, the best time of the day, uh, because um, that's when I finally wake up. <laughs> uh, for those of you that were with me, Mi Young, I think, was with me. And um, I think Jiyun is there. 
I don't think she was at the session, but a couple of you were at my session in Korea at the um, site, what was that, um, COEX, at the e-learning week back in September. That was a 15-minute version of this talk. I'm going to give you the hour and a half version here with lots of updates. So that was a really fast talk. Uh, if you're with me back in Korea six months ago, God, seven months ago already. And as I said, Mi Young dropped me off at the DMZ, but her husband saved me and pulled me back across the, the line. So um, thank him for that. Uh, it is a lovely place, Korea. It's a lovely place, Malaysia. The U.S. is so-so compar in comparison. But um, <laughs> we're going to stretch the edges tonight. So we're going to stretch from some things that you can do that are very simple. We're going to give you about 13 simple things that you can tinker with your class. We're going to give you some stuff in the middle. What's, you know, some is called blended learning. I have this handbook of blended learning, using it as a prop. It's all, this book's no good. Don't buy the book. It's too expensive. Get uh, Randy Garrison's blended book. It's much better. Um, it's cheaper. But I can use it as a prop. If you need something to hold under your computer, you can buy my book just to put it underneath your computer. That's, so we're going to talk about blended learning. We're going to talk about almost totally changing your, your class, transforming it, what they called tottering. And then we're going to talk about totally extreme, way out there on the far edges. And so we're going to stretch us all a little bit tonight. Uh, this talk is posted at trainingshare.com. Trainingshare. And my talks are at publication share because you have to believe in the power of sharing. Hey, the IMU team. Well, thank you for the IMU team because, you know, that, um, which IMU team is this? <laughs> because, you know, we have the Indiana Memorial Union right here on campus. I don't think it's our student union. I think we're talking about, um, the uh, university there in uh, Malaysia, the medical university, aren't I? Uh, aren't you? Okay, that's enough stretching the edges tonight. Well, as all of you know, I'm happy. I'm happy because I'm presenting late at night and I can bring my little smiley man with me here and they're happy too. They've been all over the world with me. I can throw a smiley man at you. I can keep throwing the smiley man and so forth but I'm happy. Now, we have a question. Zed's going to post a question for you to see if you're smiley or not, uh, if you're happy or not. Zed, you got that first question for everyone. There we go. How has your day been so far? Super fantastic. Pretty good. Okay. Not so good. Super bad. Frustrating. Or so bad you can't even think right now. Pick one of those. <laughs> Hopefully, you're having a good smiley day. Um, I've been having a pretty good day. I'm going to click pretty good here and submit it. And there I voted. Now we're going to let Zed come in and give us some of the results of that poll. Right, Zed? I think he's got them. He's got his video stopped, so we'll see if he's going to pop. Okay. I think he's okay. okay, can you see me here? Can you see me? Gotcha. Okay, I cannot publish the results. That's the biggest problem here. But I can tell you overwhelmingly we are number two, which is pretty good. Okay, we have 23 people saying it's pretty good. We have another two people saying super fantastic. Please identify yourself. You're, you're super fantastic, happy guys. And then we have uh, okay. We have another eight with okay. And then we have two actually rock bottom, super bad, frustrating. So I hope they're not from IMU. Oh no, sorry, we have two that says I can't think right now. So, but the majority <laughs> is at the moment uh, pretty good, okay? The majority is at pretty good. I'm sorry I can't publish the results. I could do screen sharing. That would slow down the performance. But that somehow WizIQ is not so clever in that it actually doesn't allow to publish the results to students, I mean to participants, which is kind of annoying. But anyway, but what we know now is that the majority are feeling already pretty good. So Admiral Kirk can either make it, you feel super fantastic or maybe go for the dump. I think it'll be the upper level. Okay, I'm by. Goodbye. Thank you. I'm going to tell you that you may get an email from my good friend Okwa Lee who is having a little bit of difficulty coming in tonight. And so um, I will, I sent her the link and um, she's saying she's having difficulty coming in. So um, she cannot. I cannot attend the webinar. Uh, please let me in. Anyhow, I went to graduate school with her a long, long, long time ago. You should be able to. Uh, 
Does anyone else have a, did anyone else have a problem getting in tonight? Let me give you her email, Zed, and then um, you okay. can then write to her. And there you. Sorry about that. Yeah, sorry. Hang on. Hang on. Of course, we have to make sure everyone's getting the right attention here. So we'll get started in just a second. <laughs> Okay, that's it. You've got it now, so you should be able to catch her in there and help her out. All right, so we're happy for the most part here today. Now, I'm happy. My dog's happy. My dog's happy because he can get his degree online. So can my kitty cat. Well, I'm allergic to cats, so we won't let the cat get a degree. But uh, everyone's happy. Everyone's happy because there's new delivery mechanisms. I'm a product of distance learning. I took TV courses to get into graduate school. I took correspondence courses back in the day. Today we can learn in many more ways, many more shapes, many more places, many more ways that we can learn today. Uh, and so dogs are happy. People are happy. Employers are happy because they don't have to train people uh, at remote places. You can learn in, uh, at lunchtime. You can learn wherever you happen to be. I can be at Ewa Women's University, which is one of my favorite places in the world. Of course, when I got to Ewa Women's University in September, they kicked me out because only women were allowed. And so I walked across the street from Ewa Women's over to Yonsei University, the best public or private university in all of Korea. And as I walked into Yonsei University across the street, I didn't I didn't just notice the beautiful landscaping and ivy. What I noticed was the library. And when I went in the library, I found that every floor in the library offered a different kind of learning. The first floor was social and interactive, as we see in the bottom right there. The second floor, and, and, and by the way, in the bottom right, they're learning English by playing games. On the second floor was more collaborative, like in the top right. The third floor was more individual workstations and lectures off of the TV or off the computer. Solitary learning. The fourth floor was more counselors. The same thing happens in other places. Here at Indiana, we've transformed our library for more social signs of learning. It's like our bookstores and cafes, what we call Barnes & Noble. In Glasgow Caledonian University in, in Scotland, you see this humongous building with all sorts of learning taking place on different floors. It's like a castle. And as you fly over the top of this great castle, um, you can see that there's so much learning taking place in this building all the time. I just got an email from Myung coming from Korea. She says, the slides are totally different from September. And yes, they are. Uh, but you see, as you fly over the top in Glasgow, and you, you take a plane, and you land in Scotland, you see the kind of learning that's taking place in the building, because letters are on the roof explaining the kinds of learning that are taking place. Here at Indiana, we have all sorts of revamped buildings. Uh, we've got a whole street of about six or seven um, totally oh, torn down and rebuilt buildings with active learning centers, cafes, collaboration stations, and so forth. Uh, all across our campus. In fact, my school of education, built 20 years ago, is now getting remodeled with active learning classrooms, interactive classrooms, and so forth. At the University of Iowa and at the University of Minnesota, they have what's called ALCs, or active learning classrooms. These are physical spaces that are transforming in front of our eyes. Uh, the, this is the um, workstation at the University, uh, at Indiana University, actually, this one here. And this one here is Minnesota, University of Minnesota. I guess in Minnesota, they say Minnesota for all those people born in, uh, in Scandinavia. They got to pronounce it Minnesota or something like that. You betcha. Anyhow, up in Minnesota, they've got, you know, all these classrooms with marker boards, with video, with collaboration stations, with re, uh, modular desks, you can move them around. But my point here is not classroom learning. My point is that I think online learning has changed 
face-to-face -face learning. You speak Norwegian? <laughs> All right, Zed speaks Norwegian. We'll get him later to speak for us. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Zed. And so, uh, we don't have a poll here to raise your hand, and we didn't add this poll in, but I'm curious if anyone here has used technology and had it change your life. Um, I think you can raise your hand somewhere in here, but you can also type in the window and just say yes or no. Has technology ever changed or transformed your life in any way? Um, because it changed mine, you see. And I can see many of you uh, are typing in. Matt says yes. Shiva says yes. The Rock, <laughs> most definitely. Thank you, Rock. Uh, <laughs> we've got you, Shock, says yes. Uh, everyone's saying yes. And Okwa is in, my colleague Okwa Lee. Hi, Okwa Lee. Good to have you here with us tonight. Okwa from Chungbuk National University, the next president of Korea. No. <laughs> or at least the Korean Ed Tech Society. Here's our poll coming up. Okay, thanks, Ed. Has technology transformed your life? Yes or no? And I'm going to pick my answer and submit it. The rest of you can submit your answers now as well, and we'll get Ed to give us the results of that poll. Uh, and he took the poll away, so maybe he's got the, the results. Said, can you read us the results of that poll? Because it's an important poll. This is this is hinges on everything I've got to say here tonight. Rests on that one poll, Zed. Come with us. I'll take a break and get some tea. I'm back again. I'm back again. Just just remember my name is Captain Zed, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, so can we do it after the commercial break or can we do it straight away? Straight away, straight away, Captain Zed. <laughs> uh, okay, actually, there's only one answer. There were 42 respondents, and you can guess which one. Everyone answered the same. Was it no or yes? Yes. Obviously, yes. So, obviously, technology has transformed our life. So I'm I'm out and thank you very much for introducing Captain Z again. Bye. Hey Captain, you know what that means then? You don't need me tonight. Everyone's life's already been changed. I can take off. I can go to sleep. All right, great. Um, see you all later. Bye. Peace out. <laughs> oh, you know, 25 years ago, I was a board accountant and a CPA. Now you want to know what a CPA is? Um, certified political animal. Um, <laughs> I don't know, certified Polish uh, something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, someone can tell us what CPA is. It means certified public accountant. I was a board certified public accountant. I was eight years old. Yeah, practicing public, actually. Um, but uh, anal, actually. <laughs> you know. And I was bored to tears. You know, every day was the same day, like in the movie with Bill Murray called Groundhog Day. I woke up and every day was the same, over and over and over and over. And so what did I do? I went to graduate school to meet Okwa Lee, who's here with us tonight, but that's not why I went to graduate school. I didn't know she would be there in my first class and then ignore me for 17 years. What, and I met her back during the World Cup in Korea 10 years ago again. Anyhow, what I did every night was I read from Roger Schenk, who wrote books on artificial intelligence. I read from Elliot Soloway, who was with me in Korea at the COEX uh, conference back in September. You know, back uh, when I was a board accountant, I read from Elliot Soloway. I, I read from Howard Gardner's Multiple Intelligence. I read from Albert Bandura, who talks about self-efficacy. I read like 15 journals. I was so darn bored. You see, every day was just so darn boring. But this guy changed my life. He wrote a, a book called Learning at the Back Door. And it's the best book you can buy on Amazon for one dollar used. Because it explains life. It explains everything in life. Get his book. You see, he explains adult learning. He explains learning with technology, be it satellite, video, tape recordings, computers, what you name it. You see, at Wisconsin, he taught the first classes on distance learning. If it wasn't for him, Okwa and I never would have met at Wisconsin because he enabled me to take classes through computers, through TV, through correspondence to get into graduate school. And so here is on the bottom left of his book, he's got a kid who's learning, and I don't know if I have my marker pen, if I can grab that and put it here, if you can see that, but there is a marker pen um, that comes with this. It's not as, as good as um, 
the one I got in Adobe Connect. But anyhow, in the upper, in the in the right hand or left hand side, you see the kid with all the resources. You know, see another kid peering into the school. Another kid peering into the school. He wasn't allowed in because it was an elitist school. You see, and today. It doesn't matter. The, today it doesn't matter that I scored so badly on the college entrance examination. Because today you can learn at any door. You can go through the back door, the front door, the side door, the trap door, any door for learning. Because Charles Wiedemeyer at Wisconsin has opened up learning so that we can learn from MIT. We can learn from Seoul National University. We can learn from the Open University of Malaysia. We can learn from Boston University and in, of course the University of Illinois at Springfield he young because the University of Illinois Springfield is doing massive open online classes or MOOCs. My friend Ray Schroeder at, at, at uh, Springfield offers a class with 3,000 people in it. You know, People at Stanford offer classes with 150,000 people. I'm going to come back to that point. We fast forward 25 years. Today, anyone can learn anything from anyone else at any time, which is the premise of My World is Open book. And uh, some of you have seen that stupid, silly book somewhere around the world. Anyhow, the premise of that book is today we can learn from people who are 100 years old in a nursing home. I can be learning from 10-year-old kids in the Philippines where I was a couple months ago. You can be learning something all the time wherever you happen to be in the world. Uh, it's just the most a, a wonderful time to be learning. It's the best time to be learning. It's the best time to be human beings. If you believe that learning is life, we are in the learning century today. We are in a moment in time like no other. Because today I can learn from all of you with your questions in the little chat window. You can be learning from me and saving this and sharing it with your students. We could work on papers together and publish them. <laughs> and everyone's sending smileys. <laughs> everyone needs another smiley face in the world, right? I mean, the light bulbs will hopefully be going off during this episode here at some point. I don't know. I can see that you're learning something today. Anyhow, let's keep going. But, you know, it's an exciting time. This is a, it, it, this is a reason to be educators today. And I'm coming back to that point. Because kitty cats can be learning, even though I'm allergic to those stupid kitty cats. Even they're learning something online. <laughs> You know, uh, we've got what I'm calling the web of learning. I don't think we need to name uh, we need this name the web. I think we have to call it the web of learning, right? If I'm at Chungbuk National University, right, Okwa, learning wraps all around you. You know, the world is open today. When we've got a globe like this, and I can go anywhere in the world, and I can I can stop on Malaysia, right? Where is I can stop right there on Malaysia? Okay, we've got it right there. All right, I can stop on Korea. We can get over in Korea. I can go over here to Indiana, somewhere down here, and so forth, and where the where everyone's coming from. But that's not the point of this globe. You see, this globe. What's interesting about it is that it's web-enabled. It has a USB port in the side, and I can get updates on census records, demographics. Uh, economic data, money exchange data, currency, uh, time, distance, all sorts of things get updated. The world's truly open for learning when you have a smart globe like this. And, and if a globe is web enabled, then certainly the whole world is web enabled, right? Okay. Um, yeah, I travel a little bit. In my blog, as someone noted there, guest 118, my blog's name is Travel and Edman. Thank you, said. Um, so check that out. My Twitter account's Traveling Ed Man and so forth. But we've got curriculum documents. We've got social bookmarking. You've got video conferencing like this right now. Okay? You got wikis. And if someone told me there are actually a wiki blog tool. So my students this week showed me a tool that's called Wiki Blogger, Blog Wiki, combining tools together. <laughs> Oak was number 118. So everyone pick on number 118 now for the rest of the night. Thanks for identifying yourself, Oakwa. <laughs> so what does Thomas Friedman say in his World is Flat book? He says, management processes have been flattened, right? We've got, you know, an equalized playing field brought on by collaborative technologies and new participants from Eastern Bloc countries of Europe, from 
uh, Malaysia, from India, from China, who weren't participating equally before. But today, people at Best Buy, people at Intel and IBM can make suggestions in a wiki or in a blog that gets to changes human resource development uh, HR departments around. The three P's of business are different than the three P's of education. In education, we have piping or infrastructure. And if anyone's checking your email right now, go ahead and type in the w chat window that you're checking your email or your Facebook account because Dr. Bonk's too darn boring for me. Or you're multitasking, okay? Just go ahead and admit to it, Okwa. You're, you're multitasking and ignoring us. Anyhow, piping our infrastructure, pages of content, 52 trillion pages of content, and we've got a participatory learning culture. The three P's of education, right? And some of you, the rock's got, the rock steady, man, rock steady. And, you know, as I traveled around, here I was with my friend Su Jin there. My, uh, and you know Su Jin He Young from Illinois. She got her PhD. I was on her committee. She took me to the temples like Okwa has in the past. And the world was open. In the middle, I've got the rear admiral, the, the Norwegian Navy. The world is open. And on the, the right-hand side, we've got people in Saudi Arabia. The world is open. In the bottom left, we've got Ewa Women's University. The world is open. And in the bottom left there we've got all the Navy people and Army people of the whole country of Norway with me okay and so um, so what I need everyone now is to hold your hands up in the air as Kong says and so I can take your picture <laughs> the world's truly open right okay just kidding um, <laughs> I think that um, you know when I was in the Philippines my friend Melinda took me to the University of Batangas back in February you know, and there they greeted me. The world is open. I think, oh, well, you'll recognize Melinda, the top um, uh, person in, in distance learning in all of the Philippines. You know, even the wait staff held their arms up in the air. The world is open. My friends from Japan and Turkey there um, and the Philippines, the world is open. Um, I've got a question for you. Do you believe the world is open for learning? I think Zed's got a, a polling question maybe that he can post up there. Uh, even priests, on the top there are two priests. Father Jerome, who is with me in the Philippines, says the world is open. How many of you think the world's open for learning? <laughs> yes, no, or maybe. <laughs> Go ahead and submit your responses. Okay, interesting. A lot of you are typing away here. <laughs> oh, how can you say no? <laughs> okay, so the world is truly open for learning. Okay, June, thanks for laughing with us here tonight. And so you can see here all my friends in the Philippines, all my friends in Norway, all my friends, you know, in Saudi Arabia. I mean, if it's open in Saudi Arabia, certainly it's open for all of us around the world. What's the result, Said? He's still tabulating the numbers. He's not a certified public accountant, apparently. Yeah, yeah I have to do it manually here. No, okay. Uh, basically, option two. It says option two, no. There's zero no's, but we actually have... Uh, we have 20% or 20.83%, which is actually 10, have voted that maybe. Okay, so I'm not sure they're maybe here or maybe not here. I'm not sure. And then we have the, <laughs> and then we have the option yes, which is 58.33%. That means 28. The voting is still open, but I'm going to end the poll now. So the results show that yes, 58.33% says yes. Uh, we are open. Uh, the world is open. I just want to add one more thing. How do you say Minnesota in Norwegian? Minnesota. Oslo dialect. Oh, correct. Minnesota. Minnesota. <laughs> Minnesota. <laughs> okay, I'm out of here. Okay, I'm out of here. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Okay. Captain Zed out. Okay, Captain Kirk back, or Admiral Kirk, I guess. Okay, so, you know, you see the guy in the upper right? That's that's Father Jerome, who was with me up 15 rapids in the Philippines last month, anyhow. So the world's open for learning, and in my World is Open book, I go through 10 trends that have changed the world of learning, from web searching in the world of e-books, to e-learning and blended learning, to open source software, and open courseware, and all this other stuff. And it spells the acronym, We All Learn. Okay, so... Um, 
you know, we're going to have you all yell it with me in the count of three. One, two, three. We all learn. Uh, this is participatory tonight. Everyone's got to yell one more time. One, two, three. We all learn. Even the maybes. One, two, three. Do it again. We all learn. Thank you very much. Oh, you're going to type it in. Thank you, June. June's with me. Oh, my former student, June from Chosin University. So we've got someone from Korea University, Chungbuk National University. We've got someone from an elementary school in Korea and from Chosin University. What other universities in Korea do we have tonight? Or schools? I know we got Korea University. You know, the world's changing in front of our eyes. When Yale has open courseware, video lectures. My team right now, my research team, is analyzing 300 some websites for the quality issues, for the degree of learning um, that's possible within these websites, for the novelty of technology, for the scalability of the audience. And one of the top rated of the 300 was Yale's Open Courseware project with video lectures. Another top rated was the Khan Academy. And if you haven't seen the Khan Academy, Salman Khan has like five master's degrees from MIT. He's, he's, he's kind of smarter than, than I am. I, I couldn't get into lower Potomac State University with my test scores, okay? I, I had to cheat my way into Wisconsin. But anyhow, this guy's really smart, and he put videos up on the web teaching his, his nieces in New Orleans and back in Bangladesh and India mathematics. And so you've got this guy doing <laughs> Thank you for the nice words. He got over 2,000 free videos, and Bill Gates says he's his favorite teacher on the web today. And he gave him like 10 million bucks to put assessments wrapped around these. And so, very cool stuff, this Khan Academy with badges. I'm going to come back to the badges notion, but this is content that's helping kids who are autistic and, and, and catch, to catch up with their content in math or in reading or whatever area, or to help you get ahead. Uh, but there's all sorts of simple videos in money and banking, in chemistry, in physics. Of course, we got the TED Talks. Someone mentioned the TED Talks there. We've got, of course, Sagata Mitra in his hole-in-the-wall technology, in his granny cams, where one hour a, uh, a week grandmothers in the UK who are retired are offering tutoring to kids in India. Of course, we've got my little friend there in the upper left, Adora Swivtak, the world's youngest teacher. She's been teaching since she was six years old. She teaches with a webcam like this. She teaches writing. Look up Adora Swivtak. She, she gave a TED Talk on how adults need to teach, treat uh, kids better. Okay? These short TED Talks can transform your classes because you can uh, insert one in for a couple of minutes and have reflections wrapped around. And these are, these are now localized. So you have TEDx conferences in Seoul, Korea, or in Kuala Lumpur, or in Bloomington, Indiana, or Springfield, or Boston, or wherever you happen to be in the world. Um, what are the cities we got here tonight? I know we got Kuala Lumpur, Boston, Springfield, Indiana, Bloomington, um, Penang, um, Seoul, Pusan, I think we've got someone from. What other cities do we have here tonight? Sabah. Oh, good. We got someone from Sabah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, add that in there. Okay, all. Chung, Chengdu City, of course. Yeah, Pluto. Planet Pluto. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that Captain Zed from Pluto. Newcastle Matt, hey, which Matt is this? Is this my friend Matt? I know a couple of Matt's in Newcastle. All right. Buy me a beer, Matt. The third uh, website we found, <laughs> uh, Kingdom Far, Far Away, is this Saudi Arabia? Is this Hessa from Saudi Arabia? Or Abdullah? Anyhow, Link TV. If you haven't seen Link TV, it's it's education um, television. It's called Television Without Borders, and so you've got all sorts of TV specials, net, National Geographic specials at Link TV with curriculum wrapped around it. They've got a, a Asia Pulse for what's happening in Asia, Global Pulse, Latin America Pulse. You can hear what's happening around the world and see it. <laughs> ah, Pluto's no longer a planet, Captain said. Of course, we have my friend number 118, Okwa Lee, on board. Thank you. Oh, that's Okwa right there. Professor, soon to be president of the country. She knows the president. Eh? She's been in the Blue House many times in Korea. And um, she looks the same as we did in graduate school. So, um, you know, 
I won't say, but I do know that there's some really good, um, well, I got, the doctors took care of me in Korea. But anyhow, uh, Oqua was interviewed by Cisco Systems. They interviewed me. If you see in the bottom left of that little screen, you see in my picture, very, very, very small. They, they interviewed like 30-some educational, uh, there you go, thanks, Zed. Uh, thanks. And maybe you can be my pointy man tonight. Thank you, Zed. And, uh, <laughs> and they interviewed us and made these available free to the world. So schools, Myung, can talk about transforming. Okay? Fozzie, you can take these videos and have reflection sessions on how to transform schools with these videos from Cisco Systems. Go to their website, their foundation, getideas.org. Take a look at Get Ideas. Go to Current Television and find out why babies are smoking in Indonesia and in uh, other parts of the world. You know, Current TV are people creating the news. Al Gore's network, which actually has a lawsuit against it this week for a very controversial reason. Um, I, don't wanna, I don't have time to get into, but they fired their anchor man in one of their shows this week. But Current TV, very popular, people creating the news. And we have my friend John Bowermaster, who puts his National Geographic specials up in Link TV and other places. And if you haven't been to his website, johnbowermaster.com, if you're in environmental education, if you're concerned about the planet Earth, he is the one you need to take a look at because he's doing all sorts of specials around the world about the plastic, the, tr the large garbage dump, dump in the Pacific. He's doing specials on the BP oil spill. He's doing all sorts of specials around the world. He goes by sea kayak to Antarctica. A crazy man. Very crazy man. But he gave a keynote at eLearn back in 2009 in Vancouver for us. I'll be in Vancouver Friday. If anyone's coming to AERA, let me know. I'll see you. I'll meet you in Vancouver on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. We've got my friends Aaron Daring and Charlie Miller from Minnesota, University of Minnesota, as they say there. You betcha. And they do Earth Education. National Geographic gave them money to travel to Australia last month, to go to Norway in August, to go to Africa last year, to do environmental specials. Go to Earth Education. Go to Polar Husky, another one of their projects, rated high on our list of high-quality websites. People want to know about quality online. So my team has found 300 high-quality websites. Take a look at extreme-learning.org. Polar Husky, you want to follow Aaron Daring and Charlie Miller when they go to the Baffin Islands or they go to Greenland. They do curriculum wrapped around this for elementary school and middle school kids, me young. You can use this in your classes. Okay? Well, I'm happy. I'm happy, happy, happy about the state of things today. Okay? Look at my dog. He's content. He's very, 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 very happy about the state of things, you see. But I'm not content. I think we can do better than that. My cats aren't content. You should not be content. We've come a long ways in the past decade. There's a lot that's been happening online. Look at all that we found out back in 1999 and 2000 about dropout rates online, about plagiarism and assessment. You can read all our reports from a decade or so ago. But we've moved on since that shovelware days. We just shovel stuff up onto the web and we are bored to tears, right? You know, we're just falling asleep. But today, our eyeballs are clicking. Today, we're watching what's happening. You know, and so we can give out top banana awards to these websites because we have improved during the past decade. Okay, lots has been going on in Korea. Look at the data from last week. You can see bandwidth in Korea exploding. Right, Hong Kong, Japan, Latvia, Netherlands, Switzerland, Czech Republic, Ireland, Romania, Denmark. Where's Malaysia in the United States? Well, the United States is at 13. I don't know about Malaysia. I don't know. Where's Australia, Matt? Okay. Uh-huh. How are we doing there in Sabah? Well, let's take a look at some cities, right? Matt has no clue. <laughs> Somebody's waiting for the Indiana Jones stuff. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see if we can find some of that. Um, but what about cities? Daegu, number one. Daejeon, number two. An Young, number three. Kim Chun, number four. Seoul. Oh, I'm sorry. Mi Young. Seoul is number five. You guys are way behind the rest of Korea. Look at Japan. It's got number six and seven. Korea's got number eight. Suwon province, just south of Seoul. And then we've got more Japan. 
Okay, San Jose is the fastest city in the United States, number 13 in the world. How about the rest of you? How is your internet connection? I think Zed has a survey poll for us, don't you, Zed? I have no clue how we're doing on time, but that's okay. How fast is your internet connection? I'm going to say it depends, because if I'm at school, it's very fast. If I'm at home, well, <laughs> okay, Zed's going to tabulate these numbers uh, for us. Fast as a snail. <laughs> fast as a snail. And by the way, this is being recorded, right, Zed? So if you want to, we'll be sharing that URL. If you check my Facebook account, I'll be posting the URL for this. You can share with friends. Zed will post this URL, won't you, Zed? And he's got the numbers. He's tabulating these numbers for us. But, you, you know, Seoul's the ubiquitous city. You know, when you go there, people are checking constantly, you know, and downloading. They're checking their profiles. Okay, are you ready? We actually only had 35 that voted, and we actually have 48 here. So that means 12 people here are not participating or doing multitasking. That means they might be on Facebook or doing something else. But we have 48 in the room and we have 36 that has responded. Now 37. Can we have the, the remaining 11? Okay, okay we stopped 20. We got 38. Not a bad fast. response. <coughs> okay, so the overall winner is... Let's try to guess. The crowd can guess. i give you 10 seconds. Which one, which option is the overall winner? Type in the chat window. Which Majority. option is the overall winner? <laughs> okay. Well, Kurt Bong says very fast. <laughs> you're, you're hoping your Korean <laughs> delegation has done well. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give the announcement. I'll start from uh, the, 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 not the top one. I'll do from the bottom one first, okay? The lowest one, the lowest, only 2.08% said it's bad, and that's one user, okay? One user said it's bad. Number two is very slow, okay? 6.2.5% or other three users said that it is very slow. And I suppose none of them are from South Korea, okay? <laughs> now, the other one is very fast was another option. That one was 8.33%, only four users. I think we have more than four from South Korea here, so it's interesting. Either they're participating, multitasking, or not here, but there should be more, okay? And then number three on the list, number three is fast. 16.66% said, or eight users said it's fast. And then number two, we're reaching the top, eh? the top number two is slow. 16.66% said it's slow. Well, that's eight users. And the winner is, who is the winner? You should, if you followed me now, you should know who, are, who is the winner. Which option is the winner? <laughs> ah, yes, correct. Medium. Medium is the winner. And that is basically 31.25% or 15 users said medium. Now the real question is, what do we mean by medium? Okay. Thank you very much. Doc, oh, Captain Zed is out. Look, back to Admiral Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Captain Zed from Pluto, uh, for coming back in with us. Hey, this is fun tonight, actually, having these interactive polls. We don't have a lot more, but we'll make some up along the way. I think we've used most of the polls up here. Uh, but, Kurt, what's funny is that, you know, we got Lawrence, Kansas. Back from Lawrence, Kansas. Okay, we've got... Uh, who is that in Lawrence, Kansas, coming in with us tonight? Um, oh, that's Suna. Okay, she was she was in Lawrence, Kansas, right? Because um, I was just talking to someone from Lawrence, Kansas, on email before coming in here from uh, Leavenworth Penitentiary. Anyhow, hope you weren't in Leavenworth. <laughs> but you know, Oakland says we're 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 not satisfied. We're the fastest in the world, but we're not satisfied. Okay, okay. So even as fast as Korea is, they're still not happy. You guys got to learn to become happy. Okay, I'm happy. Well, you look at these numbers, and of course, we can do better than that, right? Because what happens in Korea? 
people aren't happy, as Okwa said. They have this infrastructure, you know, my friend Paul Byun, who works with Okwa there at Chung Book National. Paul graduated from our program and had this great idea. Let's create a digital book project for the whole country. And they bought in. But they didn't create the infrastructure or the training yet. And so teachers are not quite happy with this digital book project where they're going to embed in hyperlinks and simulations and animations and dictionaries and a thesaurus. You know, the um, top digital book project in the world is in Korea, and they're not happy with it yet. All books being digitized by 2015. They have a timeline, but no training. Scaling back that training. And my son went off to Tanzania last month with Paul Kim, or a month and a half ago, with my friend Paul Kim from Stanford. I think see June's here from from Boston U. She went with Paul to Mexico City a week and a half ago. Well, they went to Tanzania with two servers. One blew up the first day. They didn't have power. They didn't have electricity, so they had to buy a power generator just to get these things started every day. You know, while technology may exist online, and there's Paul trying to fix things. I don't have all the pictures here, but um, I got some great ones that uh, that my son sent because he took the pictures. But you should see the wiring that that <laughs> leads up to this computer. You should see the wiring outside. I mean, basically paper clips holding things together in this project. If they didn't have a little paper clip, this project wouldn't have flown. Okay. And so, you know, it's amazing we got this broadband technology, but yet we need a paper clip to keep it all humming along together, okay? So I have a problem with that. Anyhow, that first framework was the We All Learn framework I briefly mentioned. The second framework I'm not going to talk much about is a book I'm working on called Tech Variety. I have 10 motivational principles for online learning. And tonight, I'm not going to talk about it much. I'm half done with the book. It's another talk. I'm just mentioning it here. If anyone wants a chapter on how to create a safe tone, or build autonomy, or variety, or relevance, I'll send it to you. I'm half done. I'm through the A word. I've got 50 strategies done. But this tech variety is basically, my point is, if you embed a safe climate, if you embed feedback, if you embed um, tension or conflict, if you embed project-based learning, if you embed autonomy and choice, if you do these motivational things online, students will not drop out. They will succeed. All you need to do is think about how to engage your learners and motivate learners and move away from shovelware, the dreaded shovelware. Okay, just plopping stuff up on the web because that's how we do it in Texas. I'm sorry to pick on Texas people tonight. Okay, I should pick on Indiana people instead, or Boston people, or Springfield people. R2D2 is another method. It's in my R2D2 book, and, and you know this method stands for read, reflect, display, and do. And it, I'm not going to talk about it today. I'm mentioning it as a third framework. If you embed in reading activities, reflection activities, visual activities, and hands-on doing, students will succeed. The web can be divided into four things. There's only four things you can do. You can do reading activities. You can do reflection. You can do displaying. And you can do um, hands-on activities. Okay. If somebody really wants the book and they ask me the first question at the end, I will send you the book. Oh, 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 how about this? The best question at the end, I will give a copy of each book to oh, So the first two best questions, I'll give away my World is Open book. I'll give away the R2D2 book at the end. You'll have to s just ask me a good question. Think of one. OK. Anyhow, those two frameworks are ways of making sense. The tech variety, of course, the we all learn, and now the R2D2 framework. So just ways of dividing up the web so it's not overwhelming for you. You see, because there's so much happening to keep track of. And this is one simple method, one simple way to keep track of what's going on uh, on the web. I'm going to go to a fourth framework with you tonight. And this fourth framework is maybe the silliest framework. These first three are pretty serious frameworks. But I think it's also maybe got the most potential in the long run. I'm calling framework number four from tinkering to tottering to totally extreme learning. And so we're going to, again, we're going to stretch you out here. 
we're going to move beyond the obvious of just tinkering with your class activities online. We're going to move you into transforming your classes and pushing us into far out lands. If monkeys can learn online, so can you. So let's start with tinkering. Again, what some people call blended learning, but this book's only good, my blended handbook's only good underneath a computer. Don't read the book. It's a terrible book. Oh, no, it's actually not bad. Okwa Lee has a chapter. It's a great book. I'm sorry, Okwa, I forgot about your chapter. And there's a chapter from the Open U of Malaysia, actually, in the book as well. Uh, <laughs> and one from Australia, Matt, too, from John Hedberg there at Macquarie. Anyhow, and Singapore, and India, and so forth. Um, but my point is that blended learning's all about Oh, you like the recognitions of primates. <laughs> Kitty cats and dogs and monkeys and hippos and all that. We get it all here. We'll even, thro we'll even throw in a brain if we're lucky here tonight. Okay. Um, but anyways, tinkering with our classes. Just trying to change our classes a little bit. Okay. Just altering our classes slightly tinkering with our classes. It's not just hand puppets anymore or shadow puppets, right? We have to move beyond shadow puppets. We have to start tinkering. You might add cases to your classes. So you have a text of a case and a video of your case online, right? My friend Mark Braun on the right hand side has put up a set of cases in pathology with um, ways that people died or maybe not died, but illnesses that they've contacted, a man with a cough, a woman with a chest pain, uh, someone with pneumonia, and you have to solve these cases as a doctor or someone in a, in a pathology class who might not be a doctor, might be in a different major. Or the guy on the left there who's teaching accounting, cost accounting, my old discipline. I hated cost accounting. Do not have me do your taxes. You will be going to jail. Okay, And so, and why I have glasses now. Okay, I didn't need them before doing account, uh, accounting stuff. Anyhow, he's got financial accounting and forensic accounting interviews online. The little scenario videos. There you go. The Franklin video. You can just click on them and watch these. Good, good deal, Zed. He's got it right there. Hey, you're, you're, I'm going to bring you along every week, Zed. Captain Zed. You're just fantastic. And you can download those slides. Remember, I put in the links early tonight. I gave you the links so that you could actually, and I'll put those back in here, you can actually get the color PDF, so quite if you missed it, I'll put it in the little chat window here, and you can download my original slides, um, 100 megabytes, actually, and go ahead and use them if you want, however you want to use them. Uh, but there you go. Wherever you go, there you are. Thank you, Captain Zed. So you can see the cases in scenario learning tinker with the class. It's a slight little change with the class. You haven't transformed the whole class. You just made a simple little change, like webcasting, like we're doing right now, recording a lecture so that you don't have to replay it back. And so, you know, if some kind of alien takes over my body and I start spinning around in different directions here, you know, that can all be recorded. Or if my head starts spinning around like in the, the Omen, the movie, or the, what is that movie called? Um, yeah. What's the movie where the, the girl's head just spins around and around and around? Somebody can type that in. The Exorcist, yeah. The Exorcist. Yeah, thank you, Matt and Christopher, all you gross people who like scary movies. I love the Sci-Fi Channel. Okay. <laughs> yeah, webcasting the lectures. In case I do something stupid, I just jump up and down or something like that, you know? I never know when I'm going to do something like that, okay? Timeline tools. Martin Luther King has a new memorial. Of course, he's, he's dead, but there's a new memorial for him at the grounds right near the White House in the U.S. And, and the USA Today had a special on this. And as you click on the newspaper, different things of his life pop up. As you click on the timeline they created, you find out about his life. You explore Martin Luther King's life like never before. It's a fascinating place. Okay, They've repurposed his life in a, in a way, given us a, a framework to think about. Concept maps and timelines and taxonomies 
on the web, compartmentalize knowledge, frame knowledge so that you can explore knowledge. Um, click and see what happens and explore a link. Instructors are concierge. Instructors are expedition leaders. Instructors are tour guides. That's all we are. We find the timelines. We find the free videos in TED. We find the scenarios and we make them available for our students in a semi-structured way. Okay? So timeline tools tinker with the class. It changes it slightly. Animations. This folded tool at, from Stanford has helped people understand proteins because it explains how proteins unfold and how actually how Alzheimer's happens, how AIDS happens, uh, H1N1, you name it, you can understand it and apparently people have crowdsourced this like Wikipedia and have helped scientists understand genetic codes and have solved problems that have been mysteries for decades. They solved by putting this folded game on the web, a simple game, anatomy on the web human embryology on the web from Indiana. Now my daughter, Nicole, she was taking a class here at in Indiana on human embryology and all of a sudden you saw her eyes click. She says, Dad, this instructor has put up animations on the web of human embryology. And I said, oh, I know, she's been to my class and presented this stuff. She took a class at Indiana a couple summers ago and it, it helped her past the class. These simple timeline tools, simple animation tools, collaborative group tools. So here we've got Ning for educators, collaboration on the web. We can join a Ning group in education, a Ning group in counseling, a Ning group in accounting, a Ning group in whatever, in Google groups, Yahoo groups. You can have case-based learning online. So at Indiana School of Business, which is getting $70 million to remodel itself, they have cases online, role play online, tinkering with your class a little bit by having students take on roles, or do psychological experiments and perceptual, visual ex perceptual experiments on the web. See Gestalt experiments, um, Stroop tests, reaction time tests, free articles on the web. I have a whole class where everything's a hot link. Every article's available for free. Okay? And today, why not have free articles? Why not have free podcasts? Why not have free blogs? Incorporate in open access journals, open access podcasts, open access blogs. Tinker with your class. This week, my friend Brian Ford had a special that came out in Laboratory News with a video explaining he thinks dinosaurs are too big to, be, to have been on land. Here's a question that's come in. Kurt, a dilemma I always have from students is that they say, and I just missed the end of that, um, they say that it's fun, it's not learning, learning is boring. How does, it ta how does it take to change their perception? Have them take my class. I can bore them to tears and have them have fun. I think learning should be both. More is more. I'm an accountant. I don't think less is more. I think they should read the books. I think they should watch the lectures. I think they should explore the web. I think they should do everything. I push my students really hard. <laughs> less is never more. You went to a U.S. school. They taught you that liberal stuff. Less is never more. More is more. Believe it. I'm an accountant. I know. More is more. Teach them that life is effortful. Learning is effortful. There's such thing as hot cognition and cold cognition. Hot cognition is when you're excited about it, you're motivated, but there's also cold cognition when you're bored. You still got to get through it. You need both. <laughs> I'm making all this up. Do I really believe that? Yes, I do. No, I don't. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I do. I believe that. I believe that. The right side of my brain believes. What about my left? Anyhow, <laughs> it's a controversial question. Don't tell my ultra-liberal colleagues what I said. I could get fired tomorrow. <laughs> Anyhow, my friend Brian Ford in, in uh, the UK at Cambridge. Uh, Brian's an interesting guy. He's got his own lab. He, he, in Cambridge, he, he's got a new book on the intelligence of a cell, how cells make decisions, a book on the secret weapons of Nazi Germany, a book on, uh, on the future of meat. And, and now he's writing about dinosaurs. And um, this week a video went up that I can use in my class if I'm a biologist. 
You can track the life of Brian Ford on the web. 40 years of his life. He's a BBC TV on radio personality. His only regret is that he never interviewed John Lennon of the Beatles, which he could have. Anyhow, Brian's an interesting guy. Go to his talks if you get a chance. He's one of the best speakers I've ever seen. This week, he's got a new theory. Boom, it's in my talk here for you all today. And you can be tracking the life of a scientist because all his videos are up on the web. All his interviews for 20, no, for 40 years are up on the interviews. And he believes in technology. I got introduced to him when he was studying e-learning. He was working with Jilly Salman in the UK at Leicester. Now she's in, in uh, Sydney there, Matt. Go talk to Jilly. She's one of the queen mother of online learning, right? And now you get his whole life up on the web. Everyone's life, Einstein's life, Darwin's life, Shakespeare's life, Jane Austen's life, Mahatma Gandhi, Mother Teresa's life, everybody's life's up on the web. Your life, your life in 20 years is going to be on the web. All the stuff you're doing in Facebook today, educational anthropologists will be looking at your blog posts. Okay, June? He young, Fozzie, be careful what you post. <laughs> We've got all this rich data. We've got the United Nations Digital Library with cultures of the world. As you click on Korea or you click on Malaysia, you get text documents and videos and pictures. Free. We want quality stuff. Here's something that took six years to put up with peer review. The British Library, turning the pages, they scanned in Mozart's works. They scanned in Da Vinci's works and put audio files wrapped around it. <laughs> you better be more careful, number 84, whoever 84 is. Be careful. <laughs> um, anyhow, we've got, you know, all these great writings, literature, culture, scanned in. The Magna Carta scanned in and audio files wrapped around it. Now, people think there's junk on the web. Oh, it's Fozzie. All right, Fozzie, be careful. <laughs> uh, I miss you, man. Um, anyhow, um, big hug to Fozzie. Everyone give Fozzie, he feels lonely over there in Penang. Anyhow. <laughs> um, so, you know, when we've got content and websites like the Encyclopedia of Life, the Encyclopedia of Life has 2.7 million species known to humankind that have been indexed and peer-reviewed and put up on the web. When that's up on the web for free, let's forget about all the junk. People complain about all the junk. We can move on and think about the good stuff. Google has an online art project, and last week, Nightly News with Brian Williams had a special. I talked about this in my class here at IU in the morning, and at night they had it on the Nightly News. And my students are like, wow, it's in the nightly news. Google's online art project. You've got the Van Gogh Museum in the Netherlands. You've got the Louvre. You've got the Korea National Museum. You've got, you, know, you name it, it's up there. The, the uh, MoMA in New York City, the Museum of Modern Art. All these exhibits are up on the web for free. If you teach art, you can tinker with your class. Online encyclopedias. I just found this one this week. It's called the Encyclopedia of the Earth. And wow, what a place for everything possible. Species, plant life, climate change, you name it. It's at, and it's peer-reviewed. It's peer-reviewed website. You have to be qualified to be a participant to post things up there. And the pictures are just stunning. They're amazing shots of the world, all free. We don't have to wait for textbooks, right? Are there copyright? Well, they use, what, uh, this is a good question there. They use Creative Commons pictures that don't have copyright or copy left, or they use their own pictures. Okay? They don't use copyrighted pictures uh, from what I can tell. Last week, an announcement was made about TED-Ed, or maybe two weeks ago. Now, this has existed for a while, but they re-announced it. So they took TED Talks that have educational components within them and have made these available for all of us to tinker with our classes so you can put a video in at the beginning. Now, if you're interested in the use of video in your classes, I've got an article that I wrote. Let's see if I can talk and find this at the exact same time. I published an article recently. Actually, Oqua helped me publish this article, didn't you, Oqua? 
It's called um, YouTube Anchors and Enders. And let's see if I can pipe back, come back in here and, and show all of you this website. Or did I lose everybody here? Here we go. Um, I've got a way in which you can use video, 10 ways from a student point of view and 10 ways from an instructor point of view to use video in your classes. And Oqua took this article I wrote a few years ago and dusted it off and said, let's publish this. So thank you, Oqua. I wasn't planning to, but thank you very much. And it's maybe it can be popular. Lectures in my college, let's see what this question is coming in. She says, lectures in my college are reluctant to put up notes or video of their lectures online because they're concerned about intellectual property. They are concerned about being obsolete and cut out of a job. Uh, they are reluctant because they think students will not attend their classes. What's my opinion? I have, a, I have an opinion on this topic. It's, it's, it's one that you might want to explore here. And if you go to um, my home page and click on web resources, I have a new uh, picture up there at Web Resources uh, from the um, Signal Hill in Newfoundland. But if you go to Web Resources, I've got three or four portals to video. And one of them is to my class. So if you, if you click in here, if you go to that uh, and go to number 10, and go to 10, number 10B. Uh, number 10A is, uh, is like 60 video portals on the web. 10B is my class, what I do in my class. And 10C are 27 videos on how to teach online. Now, what do you tell your instructors who say, I'm going to be obsolete? Well, I tell them, if you're that boring, you should be obsolete. No, I tell them, what you can do is that you can spice up your class by having students watch a video before class. You now can do problem solving in class, case-based learning in class, student presentations in class, students repurposing those videos and selecting pieces in class. There's all sorts of things you can do as a concierge, as a guide. If they've watched the boring lectures, now your role has shifted or changed. If you still want to lecture, Lecture at a higher level. Lecture about other things. Lecture about new stuff. If all you're lecturing about is old stuff, why are they coming to class? Point made. Number two, they're reluctant to do it because of copyright. You can go and look at the copyright of every video that's up on the web. You can do what I do in 11 and 10B, and that's just make a link to the videos. And so you have, I have seven videos for every week. Some links go dead. I use the one that's are still alive. So don't worry about copyright. Just have a bunch that you just have the links to. You don't have to download the videos. Just use the videos. There's no, there's no copyright involved when you're just clicking and using or sharing the links to, the, to a public video. Now, unless you're in a state like Texas. Now, in Texas, even if you're just clicking on a video, you need permission. I'm not sure about Kansas, Suna, but um, in Texas, they need permission. I'm sorry. Is anyone from Texas here tonight? Anyone? Oh, my God, Texas. Thank you, Oqua. Mm, got some good tea there. Anyhow. <laughs> that was your second question. I forgot what the third question was, but I know it was an important question. Um, they're concerned about, and they're reluctant because students won't attend class. Okay, so have activities during class where you use those videos, so they have to attend class. Build on the videos. Create a recursive process. Remember Lego, Logo, Oqua, Logo, Logo? Build on those. Recursively build on different activities, right? Um, you, know, you have friends in Texas. I have lots of friends in Texas. I have too many friends in Texas, so I better be quiet now, honey. Um, you betcha. Uh, so that's three responses. You know, students aren't going to attend because they're up on the web. I mean, really, that's the, we should siphon off all this basic knowledge. Let's, let's have all this available so we can do higher order thinking skills in class, higher level courses, and, and accredit them for the lower level stuff. And let's teach the harder stuff. Let's teach the more challenging stuff. Let's teach the more interesting stuff. Let's teach the more creative stuff. Yeah, the higher order thinking, hots and not lots. 
You can do the lots, lower order thinking skills, with the video. You can do the hots in class, higher order thinking skills. Let's look at Bloom's taxonomy, lots and hots. Okay, Tottering, the second part of my three-part talk tonight. Oh, and I forgot my little prop here. My lightsaber. Remember my R2-D2 model? Oh, yeah. Anyhow, I forgot this earlier, so I have to show it off now since I did bring it up. Of course, I'd give Oqua the plastic one if she's ever going to go into a battle with me. I'd get the real one. But, um, but yeah. Anyhow, since I'm here in my home office, I can use the real stuff and bring the real toys in here tonight. Um, so that's my R2-D2 model, just as a remember. And with the R2-D2 model, you can totter. You can almost transform your classes change them around. No longer tinkering with blended learning. Remember blended learning? A lot of you people like blended learning. Silly topic. I end up doing a whole stupid book on it. Um, we want to we totter. We want to go beyond blended learning. Okay? Now some of your faculty will, will do small baby steps, right? Like Bill Murray in the movie What About Bob? We'll just take little baby steps, baby steps, baby steps, baby steps, right? Some people will be way over here. Some people are going to be back over here. Right? And so as we take our baby steps, baby steps, baby steps, right? How many of you remember that movie? Maybe we can put a poll up, Zed. Who remembers the movie, What About Bob? Yes or no? <laughs> With Bill Murray. Does anyone remember the movie, What About Bob? Yeah, I like Bill Murray. I think he's great in that movie. Um, he's kind of paranoid like some of my students can be at times. <laughs> Maureen, where are you coming from? What city and state, please? Or country? <laughs> ah, Utica, New York. Great. Oh, yeah, you're in my Facebook. Thank you. Okay, what about Bob? Who's watched the movie? What about Bob? We'll see who has. And we're one hour in. We're a little bit over an hour. I, I promised an hour and a half. I'll speed it up here a little bit. Okay, we'll get the results of that poll here in a second. Okay, okay, Captain Z is back. We still got now 27 votes. So, we, shall we give it another two seconds? One, two, 45. We have 45 participants. 27 have voted. So some have lost some stamina. But anyway, the overall winner is. We just answer one yep. is no. So 51.1 or 51.11 percent, or 23 out of 29, or 23 out of 30. Now it's 51.11. Now people are voting. It's very interesting. Are they changing their mind or what? Okay, okay. Basically, only 13 percent have watched it, or six of the participants have watched. What about Bob? I might have watched it. Watched it. I'm not sure. I can't remember actually. But if I didn't remember, maybe I didn't watch it. Um, okay. So thanks, uh, Captain Z has done his job. He's going to end the poll, and he's out of here and back to Admiral Kurt. <laughs> we'll restart here. Okay, we'll restart with my little train whistle. All right. Um, yeah. What about Bob? So you know, if you haven't seen the movie, anyhow, uh, the question came in: How do we help students get started? Some are hesitant, right? You always start with something that's simple that works. Don't don't go with theory. Start with something that's simple that works. When you're training teachers, have them do a web quest. Something simple that works. You know, my students do a video of what they've learned in my class. They do a blog or they, they get involved in discussion forums or they show a video. Have them find a video that relates to class and show it in class. That's a simple thing that works. Have them find a video that you never saw that links to content that you're learning. Everyone finds a video that links to a concept. Students like to explore the web. You know, so um, yeah, I use videos in my classes to start the class to show concepts to start off with uh, with one little idea. I call them cool resource providers. Students are the cool resource providers who start my class off, right? We might flip the classroom, like this article in, two months ago in eSchool News, where students watch the video, listen to the podcast before coming to class. Then when they come to class, 
They can do all sorts of interesting things wrapped around it. They, they have seen the lecture. They have participated some time. It's now we, what's called flipping the classroom, changing it around. The Chronicle of Higher Education talked about this too. We're seeing this constantly, this notion of flipping the classroom, right? And so um, Salman Khan, watching his videos, uh, flips the classroom too. He says we should reinvent education by putting video on the web that's boring let them watch this, reflect on it. Now, how do you embed questions? You can embed annotations in video. You can embed quest test questions now in video. With YouTube, you can have annotations. I didn't realize this, but I have a student doing a dissertation on that right now. So Norris says, I like using video. Um, chemistry virtual lab. Well, yeah, that chemistry virtual lab is pretty cool. It is very cool. Nor have we met. Are you one of my former students? I don't think you are, but anyhow. And where are you in KL, Norm? Uh, you're in Sabah? Or Sarawak? Sabah. Hmm. KL. KL. Okay. Well, next time I'm in KL. Oh, they make me go running in KL all the time. Hash Harrier runs. Number one, my friend Ryan Ostin. I'll see him on Saturday in Vancouver. He's from York University in Canada. One of the one of the university professors of York University, one of the smartest people in the world. And he has his students doing wiki syllabi. They, they create the syllabus with him. They create the lesson plans with him. My students do books with me. We write books with the Open U of Malaysia, the books with the, um, the Beijing Normal University students in, in, in um, Beijing, in China. We do books with students from Kyung Hee University in Korea or wherever, in Taiwan, in, 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 in other states in the U.S. My students write books together. Okay? We might critique a wiki book, then we might write our own. We might edit a wiki book uh, that exists and then we write our own. Wikipedia also owns a website called Wikibooks. Wikipedia also owns a website called Wikispecies. Um, they also have Wikisource. You, you can see the original documents of John Dewey or Einstein or Shakespeare or you know Mother Teresa. The Wiki Wikisource. Cool stuff on the web. Tink, uh, tottering. Changing the class so much that students are creating the syllabus with you. Students create a glossary that's interactive. My students create interactive video glossaries of my my course concepts. My students are doing all sorts of public policy initiatives. Well, actually, students in our School of Public Policy edit Wikipedia pages on public policy. My students edit Wikipedia pages on educational technology. Two weeks ago, I was at Georgetown University's website, and they have a whole series of things they're doing at Georgetown in DC, including students, as a class, changing Wikipedia for the better, adding more quality. My students do films. They do documentaries of what they've learned in my class. And if you click in Yua's film there, um, it's a fascinating film. Uh, Angelis is pretty good. Valerie's is pretty good. But Yua's is fascinating. It's like Wizard of Oz, OK? She summarized what she learned in my class last fall. And she does a wonderful job and grabbed a former student who was an actor in Broadway plays to help her out in that video. I have a student in the bottom left who sings a song of what he learned in my class and made a video of it. You want to get students involved, have them do something with the content. At Georgetown, they have students doing documentaries. Here we have social justice documentaries of what they've learned by walking the streets of Baltimore or walking the streets of Washington, D.C. Bring in people like Stephen Downs or George Siemens from Canada who created a, a new theory called connectivism. Bring in researchers from Antarctica studying penguins. Bring in researchers from Adelaide or Darwin, Australia. Bring in Don Tapscott who wrote the book Wikinomics and Growing Up Digital. Boom, he's in my class. I bring in these experts. My students talk to them. They hate their ideas before we bring them in. Then I bring them in. They love everything they have to say. They critique every idea about their books. And then when I bring them in, they go like this on everything they have to say. 
video conferencing. Here's students in the left hand side, students from Mexico interacting with students from the U.S. on agriculture, from Madison, Wisconsin, actually. Okay, this is from our alumni magazine. You may remember reading last year. If you read your alumni magazine, Okwa. On the right-hand side is my uh, students on the bottom interacting with the University of Students uh, students uh, at the University of Houston. My former student Mimi Lee's class and mine did a video conference after doing a wiki book together video conferencing. At Georgetown, they use Solia. Solia lets students in the U.S. talk to kids in the Middle East to build bridges and cultures. It's what should be happening today with North and South Korea, right? What should be happening today in different parts with U.S. and Iran and Iraq, which does happen to some degree. But Solia was built by a guy named Lucas Welch. Lucas Welch, and here's Nora's got another question. I did. She wants to win a book, I think. Uh, I did a video conference on blended learning at my college, um, the School of Computing at the university. And um, she says that um, uh, the audience hated it. Uh, I wonder what went wrong. Did a video conference on blended learning. I did. If you go to my, my 27 videos on how to teach online, you can go to those uh, videos, and let me um, give you the link for that. There's three on how to do blended learning, if you're interested in that. And here they are. Here's my 27 videos on how to teach online. These are all free to the world, 10 minutes long, how to create an online class, how to teach online, how to give feedback, how to do blended learning. That might help you a little bit, nor I, uh, it's a long answer there. Let's, let's get back to that at the end, maybe. How's that? Um, so this is all the last two weeks I've been exploring Celia. Now, Lucas Welch helped with our um, anchor man Peter Jennings. Peter Jennings, I think, has died. Um, Michael Mike Wallace from 60 Minutes in the U.S. here died yesterday. A very famous anchor man as well. Uh, we've had a number of anchor men dying in recent times here. But anyhow, uh, he worked with him in the Middle East and then created Solia because he thought that we need to build bridges between the U.S. and other parts of the Middle East. When I bring in David Merrill on the right-hand side, and David Merrill comes into my class, you see, and um, my students hate David Merrill, the most famous instructional designer in the world. We read his articles. We watch his videos. They hate him. They think he's a lot of crap. But then we bring him in live to my class. They love him. Asynchronous first, then synchronous. Wax him in the side of the head, kicks him in the seat of the pants, and there they go. You know, they, they, this inspires them. You see, it's something new. What the web offers is immediacy. He comes in free to my class, like I'm coming in free to... He, <laughs> Captain Zed only asked ten times, right, Captain Zed? until I said yes. And then the bottom right, we have IntelliGirl, who has a book, It's Second Life for Dummies. And, you know, she has her flaming pink head uh, wig on, you know, so, um, so I don't want her to feel left out, so I've got my, my uh, pink hair I can wear at any time. We bring her in. She's only a couple of, of, of blocks from my house, but it looks impressive when we bring her, bring her in over the camera. And then in the, in the upper left, we've got... Um, We've got uh, Ken Carroll from Chinese Pod. Ken's coming in, and, and Okwa, you met him at eLearn in, in, in 2008, right in Las Vegas. He's, he's coming in to talk about Chinese Pod, Spanish Pod, Italian Pod, French Pod. He created all these in Shanghai, China. Now he lives in Taiwan. The Chinese government, I think, kicked him out, but uh, <laughs> he was worried, I think, a little bit. But 300,000 people a month downloading Chinese Pod. Amazing stuff. He came in, came into my class last year to talk about how we did this. My, these are students from William and Mary University last year, asking me questions about my World Is Open book. So they had read my World Is Open book, and then, and it just came out in paperback, and it just came out in Chinese and Arabic. And and then I went over and visited William and Mary. I I went to to see. Williamsburg and met George Washington and I met other former presidents of the US from the 1700s and after meeting George Washington the, the, the actor George Washington at, at Colonial Williamsburg I, I had dinner with all these students that had read my book first they read it they hated me then they brought me in synchronously and they said yeah maybe so 
uh, maybe it's got something we can use. And then I met them live over dinner, and then they started talking about how they could use the book. So first async, first read the book, you're going to hate it. Then you meet the person live, and he can explain it better, right? My student in Taiwan there, Teresa Chen. Teresa, actually she's, she's, she's moving to Hong Kong. I think she's getting married, moving to Hong Kong. But now she's teaching engineers in Taiwan. And, and these engineers have to learn English. So she has them sing Beatles songs to learn English and has their own podcast shows. They're in uh, south of Taipei somewhere in Shinshu or something. My student Justin said, Dr. Bonk, I hate blogging. I don't want to blog. I want to do a video blog. Blogging's too easy. Let me put video in my blog. I said, Justin, if you want to work hard, I'll let you work harder. Students will volunteer to work harder, right? Justin's kind of crazy. One of my students said, Dr. Bonk, I don't want to just write an article for you. Let me make it a free book, free to the world, and put it up in book ricks. There are hundreds of thousands of books for your mobile phone. I have a stupid dumb phone here from Korea. This is an LG phone. It's got a keypad key on it. Nobody in Korea has even seen this phone. They only sell this phone to dumb Americans who will buy the phone. Okay? Korea, they have smartphones. Here in America, we have dumb phones. Now, I did get an iPad this week, but I can't figure it out because I'm dumb. Okay? So I have to use this dumb phone. But she's uploading this book to a mobile book, to a free website, right? all available for the world. The School of Dentistry at, Minis at Michigan, podcasts free to the world. Anyone who wants to, to listen to dentistry courses, you can anytime. Now, you don't want your dentist coming from Michigan because they only learn through podcasting. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. And then we've got brand new this week, Piazza. Piazza. We've written to Piazza. I'm having a conference call with them on... Wednesday, I think it is. So um, the day and a half from now, I'm going to meet with them. One of my students wants to do a dissertation on Piazza. Oh, Nora's students are doing eBooks on their iPads. Yes, this is new. You can do that. You're tottering. You're transforming your class, Nor. See, they love it, right? You're doing something. You don't have to do all the stuff I'm talking about tonight. Just find one or two things. See, and Piazza is a, is a website where instructors can put an online Q&A. So you can get your answers. If Nor has a question, it can go up in Piazza, and, and a student can answer it. A former student can answer it. An expert can answer it. Or the instructor can answer it. And once it's answered, it no longer has to be asked. Brand new website. $7 million of venture capital. Lessons on your iPad. Show me. I think I sent this to you, June. Um, I don't know if you were able to use this or not. But ha putting lessons up on your iPad so that students can learn on their own when they have time between volleyball and soccer or badminton or whatever sports they're doing or cram school they're going to. Simple lesson plans online. Poplet. Poplet is an interesting tool one of my students showed me last week uh, or two weeks ago. She did her final project in Poplet. And what it is, is it's a um, kind of a concept mapping tool where as you click on things, you go to the web and you explore articles. It's a rich way to present information. Very rich presentation. Getting excited, motivating, try things out. Great. Um, so Poplet's kind of an interesting tool in that regard. We started a little bit slow tonight because, you see, Oakwa was having trouble getting in. So it took us a couple extra minutes. But now we're getting going, you see. <laughs> <laughs> and the Papa, you can do as groups. It's not just individuals. You can do collaborative knowledge building, kind of like a wiki, only kind of like combining a wiki with a concept mapping tool. I guess is a way to look at Poplet, and it's free. So those are thirteen ways to tinker with your class, almost transforming your classes. Right, my friend here, Michael Wesh from Kansas State, has two videos that went viral. He's the prophet of tottering, and even he second guesses a little bit. I interviewed him at Kansas State back in uh, September. He did his research at Papua New Guinea, his dissertation, because he's a, qualita he's, um, he's a qualitative researcher and he does cultural anthropology. When he got back, he started filming about the digital age. 
and his videos about the digital student and about the percent of students that actually read the book have gone viral around the world. Millions of people have watched his videos. And if you haven't seen him, check him out. He's the prophet of tottering. I think we're now going to part three. And we're at what I'm calling a jumping off point. And so we've been sitting for too long here. I'm going to need everyone to stand up. Raise your arms up in the air. The world is open with me, right? And on the count of three, I would like all the ladies in the audience to jump with me. So on the count of three, all the females, one, two, three, jump. Oh, men, you can do better than that, can't you? One, two, three, jump. That was pretty lame, guys. Uh, ladies, you can do better. One, one, two, three, ladies, one, one, two, three, jump. And finally, all of us together, one, two, three, jump. Okay, hopefully I got your blood going a little, little bit more here tonight. Am I back? Am I back? Yes or no? Can you hear me? Hi, all. So you have to be careful about jumping. <laughs> oh, my. You know, I can do crazy things. I might just, you know, put my Moodle mask on once in a while and be a cow at some point, you know. But really, as you all know, this talk is about pirating and stealing stuff. And so we're still we're all pirates once in a while in our classes, okay? But that's enough for being silly. Okay, we're beyond the jumping off point. We should go to part three. <laughs> of course we got people riding dolphins in part three. We're moving on to extreme learning. This is the last part. This is where my research is today. <laughs> Okay, so people are now learning from cars, learning from boats, learning from planes, they're learning from polar bear cams in northern Manit uh, Manitoba. There's a polar bear cam from the Annenberg Foundation, the Nautilus Live, the guy that found the Titanic has a boat going around the world finding new species, right? Extreme learning. I'm, de I'm defining extreme learning as learning anywhere, anytime, through everything. Podcasts, wikis, blogs, TED Talks, current TV, YouTube, very simple things. Also learning from a bicycle, learning on a car, learning on a plane, learning on a train, learning on a subway, learning on a bus, learning at the North Pole, learning at the South Pole, when stuck in a prison, when in a hospital, when unemployed, when learning from free content online, anything not school. <laughs> okay, Matt, thanks for coming with us tonight. Uh-huh, time has just gotten away. Uh, when, you know, people who are retired, people who are in the military, people in Afghanistan might be learning in extreme ways. There are many aspects to extreme learning or dimensions. There's the aspect of informality. There's the dimension of location, being outside of school. There's the dimension of de delivery, being more learner-centered. There's the dimension of type of learning, which I'll come back to, and the media involved. This is an overview of our research project, informality meaning cause the meaning outside of school, informal learning, not formal learning, not traditional learning, not four-walled residential learning. So we might learn from explorers. We might learn from paleontologists whose articles go on the web explaining their research the same day their book comes out the same day a video comes out from Sir David Attenborough in the UK explaining their missing link. Immediate science. The books come out the same day the website goes live, the same day the research article comes out. The same day live science, when you explore the colossal squid, and that colossal squid is sent, the findings are sent to kids in school simultaneously, and the kids don't have to wait three years for it to get into the books. You'll find out it has eyeballs the size of soccer balls. It has claws that can bring down ships and a translucent body. Well, maybe not claws that can bring down ships, but it has all this other stuff. The largest mollusk in the world, the colossal squid, had never been found before at this size, and it gets live into schools. When we have my friend Lily Henry Roberts, who wrote the opening to my World is Open book, and nor when you get a copy of my book, and I'm sure you'll get a copy of my book. You're asking me so many questions. You can read the beginning of the book, and this is 
her little section called Cool Summer Digs. I don't know if I can get this. There it is, Cool Summer Digs. And um, she's a rugby player, but she's doing archaeology work in Hope, British Columbia, digging up people from 12,000 years ago. You could be in Albania. You could be in Egypt, Chile, Mexico, anywhere around the world. And I can be learning from them at any time. And no, this is not a striptease. I've done that before in, oh, I did that in Australia back in 1999. I think I did a striptease there. Yeah, I did. Got some dollar bills. No, you see, today I can be on Indiana Jones, on armchair Indiana Jones, See, because today I can learn anything from anyone else at any time. I can take my whip out, and so, anyhow, you get the point. Today I can be learning from her anytime I'm anywhere around the world. Anyone can now learn anything from anyone else at any time, okay? And yeah, I've been told that before. <laughs> Just a little bit. I used to look like Mark Hamill, but now it's more like Yoda. Okay. So, <laughs> Harrison Ford, thank you very much. Okay. The Admiral's gone. We're back to indie time. So we've got Google Earth. My friend there from Melbourne, Australia, David Thomas, his wife wouldn't let him go to Afghanistan to do his dissertation. She thought his head would be chopped off. So he used Google Earth to find 450 points of interest around the world. That's extreme learning. Using the web to find 450 points of interest in Afghanistan and Kandahar, where the baddest part of Afghanistan is. <laughs> Me no speak Yoda yet, <laughs> but I will try um, anyhow. <laughs> um, adventure learning. Geothentic Learning, Earth Education, Polar Husky, these are all websites. And if you go to extremelearning.org, extreme-learning, you'll find our 300 points of interest. Um, <laughs> speak like Yoda, you will. You will. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you've got guys riding bicycles from North America to South America and blogging on it. And you can follow their blog posts. You've got people running the Sahara Desert in a website called possible um, to impossible or impossible to possible impossible to possible I think it's called yeah impossible to possible and you know they're doing adventure learning around the world these guys are holding up the U, the IU flag at the North Pole at the geographic North Pole it shifted and changed and as they went up from northern Canada they talked to kids in schools about their studies about the research they were conducting you see people were learning from them. They, kids were asking them questions and and Arctic alerts were being sent out to kids in schools for role play from a project called the Journey North. Me young, type in Journey North for your elementary kids. These young people were in South America. Their family was picking up a boat and as they picked up a boat in Brazil and sailed it back to the US their daughters were taking classes on the boat and ship dock captains were proctoring their examinations. Retired teachers re were proctoring their examinations. They uploaded and downloaded papers when they got into port. That's extreme learning. Adora Swiftak, teaching teachers how to teach writing at age six. She has three books. She's 14 years old now. She's been teaching half her life, more than half her life. And she's ready to retire. Jiyun, you just started at Chosun University. How would you like to be ready to retire at age 14? Okay. Amazing, amazing, okay? The web enables all of this today. People will ask, what does the web enable us to do? Well, you've got my friend Cassandra Brooks. She's blogging on her study of the Chilean sea bass, the Antarctic toothfish, and kids in the Philippines are asking her questions one hour a day when she has a satellite link up. We're all ready to retire, Kong. She now has created shark theater. She takes a inflatable screen, a 24-foot inflatable screen to island populations in Polynesia explaining what happens when sharks get fished out, what happens to the ecology. She has a website called The Last Ocean Project. Check it out. 
my friend Wendy Ermold listens in her, in her ears to her iPod to new classes from Harvard and Cambridge and other places to help her study the water flow underneath the ice, which she, she does as a researcher. She studies that and listens to courses. There's no university on the ice. She listens in her ears. This lady was in South Africa. She got a CNN Hero Award this year because she created a tutoring system on the web for kids who lost their parents due to HIV AIDS. She's mentoring kids, right? or she's getting adults from Malaysia, from Korea, from New Zealand, from Australia, from the US, from Canada, all over the world they're mentoring these kids who have no teachers. My friend Lucifer, Okwa, you remember meeting Lucifer both in Vegas and in Singapore. Lucifer, the first time I gave a version of this talk seven years ago, he flew in from Taiwan. None of you I bet have a friend named Lucifer except for Okwa and I. Okay? And I'm Catholic by birth, and my aunt's a nun. And I told her my friend is Lucifer, self-named, beacon of light. Now, Lucifer made a million dollars at age 26. He's a white angel. He's not a black angel. He dresses in black. He's a gamer and all this stuff. But Lucifer translated Lord of the Rings to Chinese. And he made a million dollars by age 26. And he took half of that money, and he's translating MIT courses free to the world in the OOPS project, open course, open sourceware, open course prototype system. Lucifer has the largest volunteer group in the world of translators, and we studied his volunteer group. You can read my article um, uh, on, on that particular project. If I chance posting that article, and boy, this is a big chance here now. Um, I'm probably going to get disconnected when I do this, but let's give it a let's give it a shot here. Um, let's see if I can find this article. Here it is. I'm going to type. If you go to Publication Share, you can get this article. And now I can't find. Where did we all go? There we are. Okay, here's the article. Dr. Lee, Mimi Lee, and Grace Lynn and myself did this article looking at uh, the voluntary translation system um, that's available uh, at OOPS. And we looked at Lucifer's leadership in this, and we used a kind of apprenticeship approach to analyzing the data. I'm not mainstream. <laughs> if I'm not mainstream, met Lucifer in an e-learning conference sometime back in Malaysia. Yep, he went to Malaysia. Good, good deal, Nor. See? So we've got another Lucifer lover out there. <laughs> All right. Um, now Lucifer's translating The Hobbit now and going to make more money. Anyhow, that's extreme learning. When you have a billion people learning from MIT contents, it translated to simplified and traditional Chinese. When the earthquakes hit Western China, Lucifer translated disaster relief courses. He translated um, courses on how to rebuild cities. Okay? He's, a, he's got a good heart. He's an interesting guy. My friend Ray Schroeder from Springfield. He Young, are you still with us here tonight? There's Ray Schroeder from Springfield, right? He's with us. 2,700 people took his class last summer on how to teach online. Next month, I'm going to give a class in Blackboard. Has anyone heard of Blackboard? I'm going to give a course in Blackboard next month, free, three sessions on... Uh, my R2D2 model, my Tech Variety model, and on video online in May. You can get all those. These are called Massive Open Online Courses, or what's known as a MOOC. If you haven't heard of a MOOC, okay? Um, maybe you've heard of Blackboard, maybe not. Maybe you've heard of, of Moodle. I had the Moodle mask on earlier. You got Moodle, right? Um, there's other tools out there as well. Anyhow, Open Teaching. Open teaching is what I'm calling extreme teaching. We have computer game jams where kids design computer programs over the weekend and have competitions between India students and students in the UK or in some parts of South America, international global competitions. We have um, teleportic systems, telepresence systems where it looks like you're in the same room with someone else, just like right now. I might look like I'm in the room with you as Indiana Jones. I mean, better be careful. <laughs> oh, yeah. Moodle. You know,
know, military war zone learning. The, the U.S. Army has a, has a video, if you type in, called the U.S. Army Learning Concept 2015. Pretty cool video about the way the Army's moving into mobile learning. Online language learning, Chinese pod on the web, as I mentioned earlier, that's extreme learning to me. Learning a language online, millions of people today learn a language on the web. Whether it's uh, through Babel or Pal Talk or Chinese Talk or Italki, there's many language learning systems on the web. And history, if you get a chance, type in history for music lovers and you can hear old songs from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and even from today, Lady Gaga, History for Music Lovers. These two teachers on the left from, the, from Hawaii High School were our keynote speakers at eLearn this year, and they've redone songs to things like Napoleon and Shakespeare and the Trojan War and all, all sorts of things around the world. Uh, the Vikings and Charlemagne and King Henry VIII and Queen Elizabeth and all sorts of things. The French Revolution. Fascinating. And these are really engaging. If you get a chance, definitely watch these. Extreme learning of history. MBAs in war zone. More extreme learning. Learning on a plane. Learning on a boat. Learning on a train. Learning in an airport concourse. In Kentucky, their community college courses are now called Learn Anywhere, Learn Anytime. You can sign up any day for any instructor that they have at any time. And pick your instructor. My friend Paul Kim doing the Pocket School Project where your teacher is in your MP3 player in your pocket. You might put your MP3 player in your pocket and up it comes and you can do math training and literacy training on that MP3 player. He's, he's described, the, the Pocket School is des described in my World is Open book. And if you type in Seeds for Empowerment, Jung Ah Kim, June Kim, who's with us from Boston, has helped Paul. They just got back from Mexico. Here's kids in Tanzania. My son took this picture. My son Alex took this picture. It's the SMILE project, Stanford Mobile Inquiry Based Learning Project, or SMILE. My son is Korean, actually. Alex was born, he was, came over when he was two years old from Korea. And um, he's been lucky enough to be made the media director on this project, on Seeds, it's called the Seeds Project. Smile is a way where kids type in questions on their mobile devices and others answer those questions. Okay? And so uh, it's a way to build interactivity, a way to build literacy skills, a way to build engagement to get kids to reflect on what's a good question to ask somebody on the mobile device. And so there's my son there in the middle being surrounded by all these little people <laughs> and he is in, he's enjoying this. I don't know if, they're, if they are saying goodbye or hello, I'm not really sure. But, uh, but yeah, thank you June for giving us the link to seedsforempowerment.org. Thank you very much. June, is your picture up there in Seeds? If not, I might have your picture here. I'm not sure. There's Paul Kim interacting with kids in um, in Mexico City last week. There's um, there's your pic great your Facebook picture in Seeds. Uh, oh yeah, more pictures. Uh, um, more pictures. Thanks, June. And these kids in Mexico City. Uh, it wasn't Mexico City, there was it, June? I think it was a city outside of Mexico. I think he flew into Mexico City, right? And so kids tell stories. I'm sorry I don't have your picture in here, but kids tell stories. And, and Palestine kids, Palestinian kids, and Israeli kids tell stories about life and living there. Rwandan kids tell about you know, losing their teachers in 1994 because of the mass you know, uh, slayings of all their teachers. 600,000 people died in Rwanda. Well, these stories are now told as iPhone applications, as mobile apps, and they're sold back to the, uh, the money comes back to the community as, as uh, social entrepreneurship. As, as Norris said, kids can now publish books, publish their own books using their iPads and iPhones. Okay? And so this is announced just a couple of weeks ago, Apple's new electronic textbook initiative. And um, also a few weeks ago, the guy that taught a course in at Stanford with 150,000 people, this massive open online class on how to, how to create search. This is the guy who built um, 
the car that drives itself. Okay? The car that drives itself. Now he's spun off. He left Stanford. He had a tenure job at Stanford. How sweet is that? He quit to start a new company called Udacity. Udacity. He says, why should I teach 200 students? Why should I teach 30 students when I can teach 50,000 students? And so he built Udacity. Very cool. Very cool site. Udacity. Um, it's just getting started. He had 10,000 people sign up for his first class. Of the 150,000 people taking his AI class, 20,000 passed the test. And now MIT is offering certificates on their online contents. That's enough extreme learning for now. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, I guess I can take off my Indiana Jones stuff here for a minute, but I guess we're still in, we're almost done here if you guys are wondering what's going on here. So, um, so any, anyhow, I'm back to my Hawaii, I got this in, 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 in Waikiki at eLearn. But MIT is offering certificates for a small amount of money. You can take the MIT Open Courseware and um, get a certificate from MIT. I mean, Let's, let's, create, let's, let's create a poll. How many of you would like a certificate on your resume from MIT or Stanford? We'll make it either one, MIT or Stanford, yes or no, or maybe. Go ahead and create a poll. You know, it's just phenomenal what's happening out there. You know, we've all got badges, a certificate of taking courses from Microsoft or taking courses on Java programming or taking the Khan Academy courses. You can get badges today. New forms of assessment are in badge formats and maybe the admirals created there we go the admirals got, who'd like a certificate from MIT on your resume yes or no I'm gonna submit my answer we'll see what the rest of you has said on this topic I get a little bit of tea left here tonight There's some tea tonight give you my Elvis okay uh, we have <laughs> Can you hear me? Okay, can yeah. hear me. Okay, we have 23 votes at the moment. Uh, we've got 24 votes. Let's just give another 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, was it 4? 5, <laughs> 4, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> okay, uh, we have 24 votes. And there's actually one person that has said no out of 24 one that's 2.38 percent so i want to know can that please the one who said no can you just reveal yourself just for the sake of fun so you can find out why you don't want a certificate from mit uh, can we use some hot say hot higher higher high order level uh, higher level order thinking skills around so why okay and captain Z says uh, i'm going to close the poll now and back to the admiral kurt or is it yoda now i'm not sure Okay, y'all made it. Hopefully we can get all our degrees on M from MIT. Oh yeah, life has changed. That's February 16th. This, this is all recent news. February 15th, February 16th, January. I mean, all the stuff in the last couple months just exploding with stuff. Here's the Extreme Learning website. Check it out. My team has done a great job. Mink Young and and a couple other people on this on this project have done a great job. Justin and Ilho and Abdullah and my whole team. I don't know if any are listening. Any of my team here tonight? Anybody from my team listening in? I don't know if any of my extreme learning teams here tonight, but if they are, they're great workers. Shuyas. And we're about ready to do surveys. We're about ready. So here's the extreme learning areas. Adventure learning and environmental ed. Virtual education. Formal as well as informal. But anything not in traditional schools. Social change and global learning, which is my sub-team, language learning, shared online video, and learning portals. And so this is our representation of our project. We're, we're trying to push society and human development. I want to understand the lifespan of learning. I want to understand empowerment moments in the lifespan. I want to understand when people's lives have changed. Remember my first question, has your life changed with technology? My second question is, do you think the world is open? Some of you said no, or maybe. We've got the Khan Academy. We've got the virtual Michigan University. We've got Seoul National, so we've got Chung-Hee Cyber University, Seoul National Cyber University, uh, Hanyang Cyber, the Open U of Malaysia, the Open U of India, the Open U of Australia, right? We've got 
language learning with Chinese Pod and Babbel and Live Mocha. You can sign up to teach a language in Live Mocha or take a language. And there are millions of people doing this. We've got portals, open textbook portals, the OER Commons for free content on the web. We've got iCivics here in the U.S. for kids learn their civics and learn about political science. We've got the Queen uploading video in YouTube. We got the Dalai Lama doing podcasts and Twitter feeds. We got Barack Obama with a Blackberry. You know, we've got Big Think. People think about big topics in short two-minute talks. We got TED Talks and Current TV and Clip Chef to learn how to cook com Korean beef or Mongolian beef or Stromboli or whatever. We got Adventure Learning, Impossible to Possible, Penguin Science, Earth Education. We've got the coolest websites. You go to Extreme Learning, you can find out the coolest websites and Chinese Pod and MIT Open Courseware and Academic Earth and Link TV. We are looking at quality stuff. There's too many complaints that things lack quality. Okay? Um, hey, Mona Masood there. Fozzie, is Mona there? My former student, Mona. Mona! <laughs> we missed you here at Indiana. And we're going to give away ELF Awards. This is my extreme learning team, Ming Kyung Kim, Ilho Jung, and Justin Whiting and myself. We're going to give away extreme learning featured site awards or ELF Awards. Okay, <laughs> you notice that none of your websites made our coolest list, but you can win an ELF award. Actually, Seeds for Empowerment's in there. It won an award. We're creating hopes. Humanity's open platform for the exchange of stories. We want people to share their stories of life change. We want people to share how their lives are being changed with technology. That is hopes. I've written an NSF grant a National Science Foundation grant called Hopes and Dreams, where kids tell stories of life change. This kid couldn't get into college in the left-hand side till taking online classes. The girl on the bottom right lost part of her hand and was taking online classes to help her catch up to her peers. We're going to have people tag their stories, share their stories up online. We'll have a mobile platform in the Hopes storytelling system. We also have dreams. If you have hopes, you have to have dreams. Dreams is our design-based research for an engaging and active mobile system. We're, we've done our website evaluations. We're doing surveys, interviews, focus groups, and historical data analysis. We've finished the website evaluations. Tomorrow, I'm going to start sending out the surveys. I'm almost done. So when you have hopes, you have dreams. Let's get a polling question. Who thinks my NSF grant should be funded with a title, Extreme Learning Hopes and Dreams. It's got a subtitle. Who thinks Extreme Learning Hopes and Dreams should get funded? Yes, no, or maybe. <laughs> so we're stretching the edges of humanity here. We want to stretch and find new ways in which people are learning. New ways in which it's possible today for us to document learning, catalog, connect, and inspire people to learn. Who thinks it should be funded? Yes or no? I'm getting email from Anae Kong. I hope is Anae with us here tonight. I keep getting emails from her. I don't know if, if she's joined us here or not. Anae, if you're with us, say yes or no. Um, results are yes here. Okay. Okay, Captain Z is back here again. Uh, we got the 23 votes, and uh, shall we start with the yes or no? <laughs> start with the no's. <laughs> but the, the problem with, okay, the, the problem with this uh, question is you are in the room. You should actually not be in the room when we have this kind of question because you will influence the vote. Anyway, uh, okay, we actually have two no's. 4.87% <laughs> has said no. Good. So, and the rest is yes. So, yeah, so I would like to know. Actually, these percentages no, no, no. are wrong because they're based on the number on the room. So actually, two people Don't have voted no, and okay. 20, 21 has said yes. So dollar Don't, sign, don't yeah, ask who. Them. Don't anyway. ask who. Okay, no, the, the, I just want to make an announcement. I did a mistake on the percentages throughout our presentation because these percentages is based on the attendees number, not the amount of people that have voted. So please, all my numbers should be based on how the users, not on the percentages. So I'm going to cut out the percentages. But overall, we have 
three people saying no, it should not be funded. So I'll leave that uh, back to Admiral J to deal with them. Please deal with them, not uh, using any forms of uh, violent tools. Okay, thank you. Maybe they have a bone to pick with me. They have a bone. Okay, here's the bone to pick. Uh, others will give me the million dollars. This is a million dollars from Barack Obama, right? I always have my million dollar bills with me. Anyhow, we're stretching the edges here tonight. We've gone a little over and past the time. I'm happy with the state of things. My smiley man's happy with the state of things. I guess I have a final poll for you. Who thinks the world is now open? And then uh, we'll do some q and A. I've got um, time for some questions and maybe a few answers for some of you. Um, <laughs> people want a copy of the book here tonight. We'll see. Are you interested in extreme learning now? We'll see who's, you know, we're in the midst of change here tonight. We're in the midst of lots of change. Thanks for the clap, June. Um, <laughs> founded, funded, <laughs> founded, funded. Okay, somebody keeps wanting a book here. Send you a bank account. May I send you my bank account? Suna, you can send me anything you want to send me. Um, I told you, send me an address that will send you a copy to Korea University. Problem. <laughs> Okay, sorry to interrupt, Captain Z is back. Hey, the thing is, uh, we only have 21 votes, but we have actually, yes, 18 out of 21 have said yes, and finally, three has said maybe. So we don't have any no's here, but we do have 19 out of 40 silent participants. So they are probably maybe, I don't know, I'm kind of confused, overloaded, uh, and so on. So maybe you, you have a last minute to convince them. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Captain Z, back to Admiral. <laughs> this is not my Lua outfit here with my, you know, but we've got someone saying the world's curvy. There is a book called The World is Curved. There's another book called The World is Flat. There's, a book, there's someone saying the world is spiky. I say the world is open. <laughs> in the future, do you see, um, what do you see as the role of college faculty institutions other than MIT and Stanford? I, th I think we're going to need more universities than what we have today. That's a kind of a bold statement, but, but to be honest, you know, most of the world hasn't had access to education, be it primary education, secondary, or college. We're going to need more teachers, more college professors, and more, in fact, more universities than we ever needed previously. They'll be of different types and stripes. There, of course, be more online ones. There'll, of course, be more that assess your learning, um, that do like what we call Western Governors University. Western Governors University doesn't teach you anything. They give you credentials around you taking tests about your knowledge. Uh, and they have mentors. The Open U of Malaysia has mentors. They only have a few instructors. They have many mentors. I think we're going to need more mentors. I think the number one skill in society will be a counselor. I think people need counseling skills. If you are a counselor plus understand the internet as a learning tool, you will be golden. If you understand human development and understand the internet, and, and, and there's a couple of my email addresses, and there's the Extreme Learning website and some of our team at Indiana. It's a great team. I'm lucky to, uh, to be with them. That's the last slide, isn't it, Said. So, um, so I, you know, what's the future for them? I think universities will have their niche. Everybody will have their niche, right? And... Um, some some instructors will be mentors. Some will be guides on the web. Some will be program managers creating content. Some will be quality assessors. Some will be um, counselors. Some people will be futurists looking at and doing strategic planning on where we're going. Some people will still do direct instruction, but maybe not as many. So we'll be multifaceted in our skills. And back in 2000, I gave a talk on the 10 roles of faculty. And those are first starting to happen today. Now, another question has come in here. Let's see what the question is coming in. Let's see if I can get all this from Norm. We are looking at college. Um, 
students in Malaysia to carry out these kinds of learning. Students in primary and secondary schools are still being taught traditionally. How can teachers teaching primary and secondary schools take on technology and accept open teaching? Well, what's happening in the U.S. is that state governments are mandating 20 hours online for every student to get a high school degree. The whole state of Michigan, you have to have taken an online class to graduate. The state of Idaho, the state of Florida, it will be pervasive across the world, I'm predicting, within five years. Every country that has online learning available will require every student to have an online class or two or three to graduate. It's not going to be a matter of if, it's a matter of when. It's not a matter of how, it's a matter of when. It's going to be forced on us, unfortunately. You know, online learning was accepted during SARS. Online learning was accepted during H1N1. Online learning was accepted in the U.S. after Katrina and Snowmageddon. Online learning is unfortunately accepted in times of catastrophe. We have to be proactive and create opportunities to learn. Now, what can we do for teachers? My 27 videos I did, free to the world, are what I was able to offer. The second thing that I can offer to the world is this summer I will finally finish volume two of this book and make it free to the world called The World is More Open. And my motivation book, I hope to make the whole book free, my Tech Variety book. So some of us are trying to create contents free to the world and let others learn and use them. So that's part of the answer, Nor. It's not the full answer. Part of it's going to be government support, government infrastructure, governments forcing us. Third is going to be examples on the web, showing best practices. Fourth <laughs> will be additional research and reporting. I mean, there are a number of things. It's systemic. Support can come from giving all teachers a, a laptop or an iPad that costs $10. The in, people in India want to create a $10 laptop or $10 tablet, and they have created a $35 one. So it's a combination of things. Um, more questions coming in here. You know, the $10, the $10 tablet. Um, there is tuition program called Score a Primary Score A for Primary and Secondary Children. Yeah, there are some of these these programs where if you score high you can get bonuses, you can get into college at a cheaper rate. At Stanford now, if you come to class at Stanford, they take attendance on your mobile with geographic positioning systems. If you show up for class, it records it on your phone and you get discounts on food, you get discounts on your car insurance, you get discounts on parking on campus. Incentives, monetary incentives to come to class even though all the lectures are up on the web. There's lots going on. Um, hope the ministry could do this in the future. <clears throat> well, I hope so too. Malaysia Ministry of Education, the Korean Ministry of Education, and so forth and so on. So what other questions do you have for me tonight? Nor has got a book. Now, your question for you, Nor, which book do you want? You want the 100 Activities book, or do you want the World is Open book? You get first choice. The next question that comes in gets second choice. Well, the next question that I like, I should say. Everyone's typing a question now. <laughs> Zed? Zed? You want which, which is the second? You want this World is Open book, Nor? Am I right? Is that what you want? Okay. So that means the 100 Activities book is still here for somebody. Zed, you will get both books. Okay. Nor gets the word is open. Who wants this one? i got to get a good question. I also have a book called A Special Passage Through E-Learning in Asia, which Tom Reynolds, myself and Mimi Lee did, and Okwa Lee has a chapter in here and others do. I'll give this one away too. It talks about e-learning in Asia. In Malaysia we have a chapter. In Singapore we have a little thin little book. 
Maybe I'll just give it to you, Nora, as well. I'll just throw it in there, and I'll Zed, I'll give you one of them, too. I'll give you all three, Zed. Okay. Did I get another question? I didn't see another question. Guest 137, will the technology online requirement, online learning, lead to empowerment of students to invest in their own learning? Will we see a real partnership between teachers and students and between industry and the world? Do I sleep? I, n I never used to sleep. Now I do. I never used to sleep much. Let's put it that way. And I, and I do keep track of time. This is not the real time. This is the fake clock. Anyhow. <laughs> And sometimes I get tied up <laughs> with other things. Okay. You know, is this going to empower students when we flip the classroom is the question. You know, are we becoming more empowered to learn? I think so. I think technologies can push out the, the, the basic skills, the lots. We have lots of stuff out there. And then we can focus in on HOTS. How do we instill altruistic value in, uh, in education? Currently, they are bogged down with workloads um, and, prob and, and, and possibly probability of them spending time to author materials open is questionable. Here's my answer to that question. And I'm not sure who asked that question. But we don't need everyone to give away free stuff. We got 7 billion people on this planet. If we had 7 billion things to look at, we would be going crazy. And the reason I did the R2D2 model in Tech Variety is we're already going crazy. We need frameworks and models to think from. What we need is to be curators of knowledge. We, I think we need to train educators, educational technologists, I think, June, if you're going to take a class, I think courses in anthropology and, and in information science, how to curate knowledge, how to find, filter, select the gems out there. I think that's what we need. We don't need everything to be free and open, but we do need to find ways to promote it. We do need to find ways to link the free stuff together. Now, if you want to know the best resources for free stuff, Merlot is one. Connections from Rice University is another. And the silly people in the UK, uh, the great people in the UK, I'm sorry, have something called Durham. It used to be for British people only. Now it's free to the world. Um, there are other websites as well. One is called OER, or Open Education Resources Commons. It's a place that stores everything. But go to extremelearning.org. Um, these are starting points for what's available out there. So who asked me the question about, do I ever sleep? Oh, I was Zed. <laughs> do I, how do we instill altruistic value? Um, that was. Looks like we've got more questions coming in here now. Has he have, I can't pronounce the name, but um, Amiri, Amari, Amira, Amira. Thank you. Curating knowledge that totally answers my question, and it's like about psychological overload. Yeah, I mean we are all overloaded. I'm overloaded. I'm going crazy every day. My brain is mush. I need a new brain. Okay? Now, I can't get a new brain, but I can create frameworks and models to help us make sense of what's there. It takes a long time to, to look at the web and find what's all out there. And, and, and we all go crazy. So, you know, we all can't be Jedi Knights out there, right? <laughs> Finding and filtering, you know. But, um, but we can use the good stuff and find and share the good stuff out there. <laughs> find those silver bullets. You guys remember punch cards? <laughs> We've come a long way since punch cards. <laughs> oh, what else do I got with me here? What else do I have with me, I should say? Oh, that's a lot of stuff I've shared. Hopefully you got some new ideas. Okay, let's do a final poll. Um, 
who got no ideas, who got one idea, who got two ideas, and who got three or more ideas. Zero, one, two, three or more. We'll pull that poll up and see if, if you got a, a few ideas from tonight. Um, but I've had fun here. I haven't had to fly all the way to Malaysia. I could just pop in here from home and um, I'll fly to Vancouver instead on a Friday the 13th. Okay. Come visit me at the Pan Pacific Hotel. Anyone there? I have Corner Suite. We're going to have a big party Sunday night. Come join us. We're going to have a big get-together. All the most famous people. Hopefully you got some ideas out there. I'm not going to answer. This is the first one. I'm not going to answer. I don't want to buy. I've been answering all the rest. <laughs> Can you still hear me as I'm as we got the poll up there? We're going to have the most famous distance learning and e-learning people in Canada are coming Saturday afternoon. Randy Garrison, Ron Oston, Linda Harrison, all these people are coming. Steve Eusen from Madison, my old advisor, is coming. Everyone's coming to Vancouver this weekend. 15,000 people. Please vote, vote, vote. <laughs> Okay. We didn't put zero ideas. I didn't get any ideas. <laughs> I didn't get any ideas from this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm back here again. Okay, I think uh, we are now I think people are, are really excited that it was a great but I think they're the kind of overloaded voting also because we've got about now nineteen out of thirty seven have voted. And the winner is option many ideas. Thirteen out of nineteen said yeah, we got many ideas. But the question is, can we translate those ideas into our curriculum, courses, classroom, or whatever? That is the, going to be the main challenge. Yeah? yeah. And and then we have three ideas. One said, two ideas, two said, and finally, one idea. Three people said they had one idea. Good. I would love to know what that one idea is. That would be really cool. Those three who voted one idea. What is that one idea? Okay, Admiral, but before we go into that, I, I'm going to say thank you. You can go on with the Q&A, but I just want to say thank you very much for participating in this or conducting this webinar, and I think we are thrilled. I can easily say that this is the, the most historic webinar we have had at IMU and probably lecture to explore the future of learning. Because I told them this is, we're looking into the future. Some people, it's already the present, but more and more people adopt it in the future, and we might even see other things. And we're looking for the first Malaysian... Kurt, huh? <laughs> or whatever, but we're, we're excited. Thank you, thank you very much. You're giving me three books. I'll remember that. That's noted. That's documented. And I have proof. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know how to reward you, uh, except for the recorded version. We'll find ways to reward you. I'm sure you're ready. you have your financial awards already, so we can't reward you monetary, but we will promote your video and we'll recommend uh, as many lectures to watch it again and also people outside will make it public available and we do hope that uh, people here and others outside will attend some of our other webinars we have some very interesting uh, speakers as we go along throughout the year we even got Jane Hart we've got David Hopkins Steve Wheeler and we have local giants like uh, Rosa, Prof Rosan Idros and so on so it's going to be very exciting in the coming months uh, at IMU special IMU webinar series so we're looking forward to at least more from Korea will be attending that would be really great if they could so thank you very much thank you thank you thank you it's early here but it's late there so I think it's 1220 that night so I don't want to but if you don't sleep that's not a problem but if you do sleep it is a problem thank you thank you very much and I hope we can keep communicating in many ways if you need Captain Z to be on board your ship once a while uh, I'll do that I'll change my background make it more attractive and so on and uh, I'll maybe bring some equipment I, I have some equipment here you can see this is my this is my special equipment okay you see this one you see what this is can you guess what this is I don't know this keeps my voice uh, stable but this is also could be it could be nuclear waste also we don't know yet okay but thank you very much I'm going out there thank you thank you you can stay on I'll leave it on if people have questions but uh, do you want me to kick you out or, or you like to go out yourself well, gently it's up to you here's I will just leave it on until everyone is uh, here's what we're gonna do I'm gonna ask that everyone types in there are three words about this session it could be fast overwhelmed brain dead it could be it could be wonderful uh, bonk is it could be three words could be bonk is stupid give me three words 
from today's session. And then maybe you can then then we'll do one more thing in the chat window. So it's three words from today's session. Absolute eye opener I see. Okay. Absolutely eye opener. Inspiring, exciting and motivating. Epic, overwhelming, superb and fun. Informative, resourceful, exploring. Awesome, informative, overload, inspiring. That's four words, but okay, is that uh, so we went from tinkering to tottering to totally extreme learning. The world is now open for your learning pleasure. <laughs> so there's much available. Okay, one more thing. It's very funny. There was actually. Go ahead. Okay, I want. To, there was actually one that from Korea that registered for your course after one one hour and fifty minutes. I'm not sure if the participant attended, but he actually registered to participate in the uh, webinar after one hour and fifty minutes. So he was a bit late, so he didn't know how to log in. So I I, ho I hope he managed to join. Okay. <laughs> Who is that, that was person? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me just get back to the doc. Uh, let me just get back. I sent. Uh, let me just. I have to go back to the docs. Wait, wait. you can co keep on going while I find the doc. Okay. person is let's go down here motivating exploring uh, okay, truly that okay i cannot yun kyu wong lee from yonsei university I, I i'm not sure if i pronounce it correctly but young kyung lee uh, you know her or he she was yeah, my young kyung lee okay yeah. that's it okay she came in pretty late but probably she got a uh, hi young I, I think she joined i hope she joined but cuz she actually Okay, she's here. Okay, <laughs> okay. I'm gonna end the poll, and uh, I don't know where we go from here. I mean, for me, it's 12:20 in the afternoon, so it's not a big issue. It's just lunchtime. But for you, uh, and for the participants, uh, you know, because when we have a person like you, we, we don't want to cut you off. We'd like you to go on until the break of next dawn. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Let's do one more thing. <laughs> here. Yeah, I'm sure you're. I'm sure we, you're tired. And, okay. This person here. What's the name there? Ha ha ha. Hafiz. Hanif? Yeah. Hafiz, Hafiz, just call him Hafiz. Hafiz, you got the other book because your question was great. Send me an email with your address. Send me an email with your address. Now, if there's any other Hafiz there, try, try your luck. <laughs> so, you have to send me an email. Now, we'll do one last thing. What is one? What is one thing? Everyone got at least one thing. What was one thing that you learned tonight, or that you were surprised about? Was just one thing, or one resource, or one thing you might use? What's the What's the one thing in reflection here tonight that you can take with you and, and use? We still have 31 people left here. So extreme <laughs> life, living life on the extreme edges. Right. Okay. Thanks, Nor. Is Fuzzy still here? Is still here? I see Miyong is here. And I see guest 77 and guest 84 and June is still here and guest 106 and 111. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't go to bed till 3 a.m. usually, okay? So instead of PDF Earth, it is a cool and testing Google Art. Of course you're the you're the art person, June. Okay. Yes. Creating digital textbooks and wiki books and my lightsaber. You can get a lightsaber on eBay. 130 bucks. Real lightsabers. Okay. Darth Vader's lightsaber. Okay, Christopher, thanks for hanging around. Well, while you the, the all typing this in, um, you guys are going to need my email address. It is in the slides, but those of you who won the book, this is my email address. And the other one is Kurt at World is Open. Dot com. So there's a couple ways to grab me. Uh, I, again, appreciate coming in here tonight. Thanks for my friends who popped in here from the US and from Korea or from other parts of the world I really enjoyed having you with me tonight I wish I could fly and meet all of you and have dinner and lunch um, 
but that will happen soon enough. So till then, thank you very much, and I will send the link and I'll post it in Facebook. When will you have this link available, Zed? Uh, we'll make it later today, so say tomorrow, tomorrow. Actually, it'll be the same post, the one that I shared with you about from ZLearn. We just update that one, and the links to the recording will be there to simplify Ex the. So the, if you just share that link, the link will be there, everything. Excellent. Okay. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Yeah, good night. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.